have no, I have no friends. Dude. Dude. <laughs> I can't believe you bought How great is this? Fami, Batnik, JB, uh, talking head, charts? Head might be, we might be peaking too early in the year. Dude. This might be the best show of the year, and we're doing it the first week. No, keep, Dude, you got keep, Joe Fami to come into New York City? I feel like no. he's like allergic to New York. Keep, like keep He doesn't want to ever come. Keep the expectations low. Yeah. Unless there's a concert, he won't come to New York. Oh, you, don't yeah. like, you don't like New York? No, I don't mind. You used to like New York a lot. I lived here long enough. Yeah. I'm, I'm over I'm it. I'm sick. I'm over it, too. Why are you guys such haters? New York is such a great place. No, it is. It's good. That's I'm here. You know what? That's I'm here two days a week. It's perfect. It's it's all I want. Yeah. So you're here more than me, but I ate I ate at uh I ate at John George's uh, restaurant in, you know they we did the whole like Fulton, um, South Street Seaport area. Yeah. So they they have this thing called Pier 17, which has the concerts on the roof. So there's a lot of nice restaurants oh, yeah. in that building. They're all empty, probably not on the weekends. I couldn't believe it. It's a John George restaurant. It's out of the way. There's three tables filled out of, it's, I don't know, 200 far. tables. It's far down there. Because nobody works there. Right. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, that makes sense. If you work in the financial district, you're probably not going to schlep across the FDR. But if you live in the lunch. city to go down there, like on the weekend, it's nice. I used to do that. <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah, it's it's actually one of my favorite though. neighborhoods well, in the city. It's very quiet. Yeah. It's locals walking around, skateboarding, riding bike, running, going to. I love it there. Yeah, it's like too. one of the last links to the 1700s. It's pretty cool. Like those buildings have been there for hundreds yeah. of years. Yeah. You know, um, you know, it's owned by a private corporation. I did not know that. It's the only. It's the only neighborhood in New York City that's not owned by the city. It's owned by the Howard Hughes Corp, which I think Bill Ackman sits on the board of. So those streets technically are privately owned. What really? about, what, what about fundamentally? <laughs> hey now, you How know they um. Uh, they they maintain it pretty well. Like you could see the history there. It's really cool. Boston's got a ton of those kind of streets and neighborhoods and stuff. Philly, yeah. cool. there's um there's a bar down there called Fra Francis Tavern. Oh yeah. So that's I think like George Washington used to get f***ed up there. He took he took the <laughs> second constitutional Mayflower. The constitutional guys, the second one. Hold on. No, this is real. It's still he there. He took the troops there. True story. All right. No, I'll tell you a true story. So I met the kid, Alex, the founder of Morning Brew at Francis Tavern. Yeah. He's like, tell me about your business. And I'm like bragging to him that I have like an RIA <laughs> and all this shit and like websites. He's like, oh, that's cool. Like two months later, he sold Morning Brew to fucking Henry Blodgett for $500 million or something. <laughs> so I, I – remembered back i was like oh i sat there and talked for an hour about my <laughs> about my ria and my blog and this kid was negotiating with uh with with aquel springer and business insider so that was an l for me uh here this this still exists place is cool if you're ever visiting new york oh, wait. Go new check york's it out. new york's oldest and most historic bar and restaurant. Never heard of it. 1760. Yes, you have. Francis Tavern? Look at, look at this yeah, sign. Man. You know this sign. Uh, uh, You've walked by it a million yeah, yeah. times. Every time you go to Stone Street, yeah. it's it's like the next block over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, George Washington gathered a group of his officers there nine days after the last British troops left American soil. John Adams did ketamine. And got f***ed up. That's, that's amazing. Hmm. They, uh... John Adams? Was there Sam Adams there, too? They were doing... Uh, it's Boston. That's Boston, that. bro. Oh, Come on. Whatever. Sorry. They were doing vodka shambord shots, it says. <laughs> so, that's pretty cool. Uh, all right. Welcome welcome, welcome to New York, Joe. JC, welcome back to my city. Uh, we're going to go out to dinner after this? Dude, I just went to a kosher omakase. They have that? That's what I said. No crab? Um, I guess not, now that you Def mention it. Definitely not. No shrimp. No ebby. No shrimp? No. Okay. That's a good point. Nope, None of those nope, things. No, nope, nope, A lot no. of tuna, salmon, uh, campachi, yellowtail. Mm. Um, we even had like the, you know, the eggs, the fish eggs and stuff like that. It was good. What made you go there? Are you Jewish now? No, I just got the, I mean, kind of. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I know the feeling. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, I got this thing that I just, I just want to find the best omakases in New York City and I'm just not going to stop until I do. That was on the list? Is that on somebody's list? Didn't you do it last time you went with Tommy Lee to one of these places, right? Yeah, down Tommy in the Lee. Tommy Lee, not the drummer. <laughs> From Motley Crue or Tom Lee? Uh, Tom Lee. Uh, our, our analyst friend. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. Not the same guy. Um, last time I was here, but I do. that's just kind of yeah. what I do. You do love the whole Mikasi. So, so Fami was going to come with me, but he he didn't because he was too busy. I was busy. So some, some of us work. Put out some market, hedge, market, put market, hedge trades. I was working open. it. You should ask this yeah. guy. I was crushing it, dude. 
Market, markets are open. What do you want from him? Are we good? I placed a trade. I bought Pfizer. Yeah, I'm in. Oh, Josh, Josh likes yeah. Pfizer. I missed it. I knew it would work. Missed what? What did you miss? I didn't no, buy no. It. Bristol Myers is. I is, bought it today. Bristol Myers. <laughs> Bristol Myers is a better chart. I actually put on an options trade, and we'll walk through it uh, before uh, before we start eating and drinking. Is it still viable? It hasn't moved. I bought it today. It hasn't moved. Well, how many times do I have to say this? Okay. Buy it. You guys have my. Know. You guys have my slides, right? Nobody cares about your slides. Right, yes. Thank you. We got, we got everything. <laughs> Listen, don't be you hating on this chart. Shut up. I love Hold John. On. Nicole, what show is this? Today's show is brought to you by Public. Josh, did you know that the 10-year treasury right now, Thursday, January, 4.47 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the 10-year treasury is yielding 4%. 4, 4, I don't even get out of bed for 4% anymore. The two-year is yielding 4.385%. That's more like it. You know what you can get at Public on cash? What? 5.1%. Annualized. Okay. In, all, in, in full disclosure, but, but annualized. Still, but still. But still. 5.1% on cash. How do you do that? Is it public.com or the public app? You go to public.com. They make it super easy. I'm a customer. Josh, you're a customer as well. Yeah. No fees, no subscriptions, no minimums. Transfer, withdraw your cash as often as you like. And, and, and $5 million FDIC insurance. Not wow. bad. Wow. All right. Public.com slash the compound. Come in through us. It's cooler that way. This is a paid endorsement for public.com, 5.1% APY as of December 20th, 2023, and is subject to change. Full disclosures and terms and conditions can be found in the podcast description. High-yield cash accounts are available for U.S. members only. Guys, I think, we might, I think we might be peaking a little bit too early in the year. I'm a little worried. This might be our best show that we're going to do in 2024. I'll tell you at the end of the show, and I'll give you guys permission to not listen again until next year. Uh, with us today, one and only, Michael Batnick. Round of applause for Ma Michael Batnick. Welcome back. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Returning, returning fan favorite, one of our favorite market prognosticators, Real trader, real dude, Mr. Joe Fami, ladies and gentlemen. Let me give you your official intro. Thank you for having Joe me. Joe is an advisor at Zor Capital, a New York-based investment advisor firm. Joe has 27-plus years of trading and research experience, has appeared on CNBC, Yahoo Finance. What? What's the There's plus? Only one more. What's the plus? It can't Wall, be 27. Wall Street Weekly at 27 years and how Cartoon, many months? Cartoon Network. <laughs> Don't forget Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network. Yeah. Joe, thank you so much for coming Thanks for back. having me. Love you guys. Yeah, man. Um, and right across from me, ladies and gentlemen. Chartmaster Flex. He needs no introduction, but he's going to get one anyway. JC Peretz is the founder, chief strategist for All Star Charts, a technical analysis research platform for hedge funds, RIAs, family offices, central bank investors. JC Peretz, ladies and gentlemen. Sushi chefs. Omakasi. All right, let's start this way. Last year was an amazing year for most risk assets. Up 50% on the NASDAQ, 25% S&P 500. Bitcoin went up 150%. Even bonds eventually started to rally toward the end of the year. It was really hard to not make money last year. By the last week of December, every stock I've ever heard of was going up. Like there were stocks going up 10% on no news just because they were down all year. That was like, I, Michael and I framed this earlier this week. That was an as good as it gets market, right? Like the stove was so hot, drop an egg on, it's cooked in one second. Any money you put in the market is up the next day. Those periods of time tend not to last very long, but they also don't necessarily need to signify a top. Do we all, can we all agree to that? No, yeah, I, fair enough. it actually signifies the exact opposite, right? Okay. Yes. yes. All right, go. Yes. yes. Strength go. leads to more strength. So what you're referring to is what, you know, if you quantify your- It's a breadth thrust. That's exactly what it is. We have like a one month breadth thrust. And, and it's less about, oh, it's the Zweig breadth thrust or the, the, the Wiley, th Wiley breadth thrust. And then everybody's got a thrust. It's less about that and more about there's a lot of thrust. There's a lot right? of thrust. And, and somebody, somebody in my inbox called it a stock market priapism. 
You know what that is? No, I do not. What that means. Why don't you no. Google, Why don't you Google that while I finish this conversation? Um, don't say out loud though when you find the definition. We'll we'll let the folks at home do that. All right. So here's the question: What will it take to get bearish? Joe, let's see. Oh, hold on. Why are you just stopping this breath conversation? No, 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 this is no, no, really no, no, important. Hold on. You can't just throw out stop. Clear stop. 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 It was a relentless amount of buying pressure. And what your experience was in that particular period, when you quantify, is that there was the most amount of new highs that we had seen in years, yeah. right? So what you were observing, you can actually quantify and see that. Now, when you go back and see, well, how does the market normally do when that sort of thing occurs? That is consistently an early cycle behavior, right? So the last time we saw that sort of behavior was actually in the spring of 2020, right? So it was off the lows, but then you got that breath expansion. This was that. So historically, it's early in cycles. Now, short term, it tends to lead to some short term uh, corrective oh, action. Yeah, right, right. That's, that's, how, that's I agree, also pretty I agree consistent. All this. But when you zoom out, that's that's early cycle. I brought all the charts I brought that you don't care about, all the charts that I brought. No, I do. I, know. I, I do, do too. Literally, don't be signa- hating li- on literally adding to what he said. So we, we shared a chart last week that JC you would like. And I've been giving you lots of flowers saying that to quote JC, how can an overwhelming amount of demand for stocks possibly be bearish as if prices crash from all-time highs? We know they don't. But the chart to show like, yeah, we're extending the short term. 90 or 80% of Russell 2000 stocks were more than 5% above their 50 day. That is like very, very, very stretched. So short term, yeah, we're, we're probably going to burn some fat off, work it off. But right. longer term, this is not bearish. Well, we have to go no. back to why. There's no evidence that historically ever that it is. Right. Strength leads to more strength. And there were a lot of rare events. But we have to go back to why and what caused the strength. It was the Fed completely shifting policy. Yeah. Because like, talking Nove- about the strength in November hikes. and the strength in December was Powell signaling that they're done with this interest rate hiking cycle and confirming it in December. And the market doing, doing a total shift from five, five and a half Fed's fund rate to the market's a discounting mechanism, prices, what's going to happen six to nine months from now, shifting to what, three and a half, four percent by the end of this year. So Joe, if we believe that, I I do believe that story. Like that was, that was a huge turning point in the market. Yeah. People just stopped talking about rate hikes mm-hmm. after that. That being said, if we believe that that, that, end of the year rip is due to that, then maybe that could be the seed of its undoing. And ADP this morning uh, far exceeded expectations on uh, on the, the jobs number. Like, could that, but the stock market didn't react negatively to that. Even on the sell of the last two days, the VIX is at 13, it's snoozing. No, but yeah. to your point, after the big strength, you digest it. After a big Thanksgiving meal, you sit on the couch sideways, digest, little pullback, whatever. At least that's what I do. And then Market's more, got some gas. more strength later. But you got to be patient. Let it digest. Are you still seeing as many setups, though, that look promising from a, a, a trading perspective as you did, let's say, December 15th, 16th, 17th? Yes, but I, in I, new sectors. Yes. You agree with that? And Yeah, Financials? And, and pullbacks. Okay. So you want after a big run, you want to see how things pull back after something makes a big run. You don't like you don't want to see it give it all back. If it gives a little bit of it back on light volume to a logical support level of moving averages for people who use the technicals, I'm seeing a lot of that. Do traders using technicals to can they just shift to a new sector that starts working like as simply as it seems like Absol- they can? Absolutely. So that's what's very different from always fundamental rotation. investors. There's always rotation. Right? No, 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 but like like let's say I say to a fu- somebody who's fundamentally driven the sector that they've made money in all last year, tech. And then this year, all of a sudden, there's another sector in favor. They don't shift to industrial. My bet is that there will be. My bet is technology yeah. probably they're, underperforms. They're, they're My all, point is, is fundamental people, it's harder for them to be like, okay, I'll become a bank expert now because the XLF is ripping. Good. Technical people <laughs> can make that shift in the same day. Yes. Stock yeah, is a stock. 05, 06, all I owned was housing stocks when there was the Toll yeah. Brothers. Now these transitions and, and sectors. That was the wave. Yeah, and but 07, remember, it doesn't take a day. Went, it's not just one day. No, but it you see it develop. Process. And yeah, when exactly. oil went from 50 to 150, it's all that's what did well in 07 was everything commodity related. So you, if, if you are able to adapt, you have to accept the market's always changing. So I think, right. So I think my point is like people that tend to view the market through a fundamental lens, for them, they're going to switch sectors because another sector is having like, a lot of earnings growth or it's more in favor. It's like, well, what are the things that matter to these stocks? 
So if we're trading REITs, it's it's AFFO, adjusted funds from operations. It's not earnings per share. If we're trading media companies, they trade on cash flow, not earnings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That seems like and a harder now shift. Fact, now factor in interest rates. Now, fa- right. Now factor in the million qualitative things that right. I know you don't give a shit about, but it seems Some like- Some of them, the ones that matter. Fair. It seems like it would be harder to make that shift than to say- Hey, look, this sector has 80% of its components breaking out. Like, I will now shift to being involved with these stocks sure. technically. Yeah. So I, I think that's— Historically, leadership and sector rotation, it always changes on every new cycle. JC, when did the bear market end? When did the last bear market yeah. end? Yeah. In June of June. 2022. I knew so we're 18 months in. <laughs> What? I'm, a- I'm answering for we June can, we- of 2022. Yeah, that's when all we the talked stocks, about it here. That's when all the stocks bottomed. Last January, a year ago, we were talking about the bull market. That's right. Yeah, technically, we're already six the months S&P into the bull market. In October, October on the peak. On peak. I know most components. there were no stocks yeah. still going down by October. Almost nothing. So June had the highest number of stocks still new making lows. new lows. That's how you're dating it. Yeah, and then and then just go back and see. Most stocks were already, people were talking about how 2022 was such a bad year. The second half of 2022 was a fantastic year. Mm. It was fantastic. Everything was going up. Not for large tech. Except for large tech. And then you got rotation at the beginning of the year into tech. That's exactly what Farmer's talking about. And a lot of them topped before the market fell apart in the beginning of 2022. February of 21 is when the market peaked. By the time the S&P made its high at the end of 21, nothing was still going up. But JC, you wouldn't have said, though, in July of 2022, okay, the number of new lows looks like it peaked. Therefore, we're now in a bull market. There's like an in-between phase before you know definitively. And of course, well, we were looking in July and you your anecdotal evidence that you were just saying about how like, you know, everything's going up and all these stocks are going up. At that point, there was just bad news every day, bad news every day. And yeah. every day we were saying, why aren't these stocks making new lows? Why aren't these stocks falling? Everyone has it's a different definition. Thing. Some use his definition. Some use the actual index definition. Some use a follow-through day. Some use 10% off the lows. Some use 20. Right. Some use a new high. It's it's. It was I, like, I, I like Livermore's uh, definition. Just uptrend or downtrend. Right. Keep it simple. Right. So the downtrend is not over when the bear market necessarily ends. You have to, It takes time. For Most the, stocks right have ended their downtrends already. The indexes that are cap weighted right. might still be going down, but most things are already on their way back up. So in 2009, for example, March of 09, the index is bottomed, but nothing, there were very few stocks still going down by March of 2009. Most stocks bottomed in October, fewer stocks made new lows in November. And then by March of, 20, of, of 2009, there was nothing left. Quick, we, we get back to my original question though? So what would what would you have to see, whether it's internals or price action or some combination of the two? It sounds like from Joe, to you would say, need to say the Fed, th- the Fed this pivoting. Is, this is it. The Fed pivoting to maybe we're not cutting. The Fed pivoting or just a lot of technicals. I use key moving averages that statistically where the institutions support them. I don't really care about... I want to interpret what the big institutions are doing. The big institutions control the market, period, end of sentence. So my opinion, his opinion, your opinion, like no one's opinion matters. It's what, you know, the big institutions are doing, the pension funds, hedge funds, mutual funds that are moving billions of dollars. So I want to interpret what they're doing as simply as I can through price and volume. And as long as they're supporting the market at key levels, I'm going to stick to it. But how are you watching them? What does that mean exactly? What do you do? Like 10-week moving average if on the S&P or the NASDAQ. That's a key On your individual level. stocks or on the index? Both, both on okay. stocks and the index. And longer term people use the 200 day for longer term you know depends on your time frame but a good medium time frame historically statistically you'll see a lot of times institutions supporting it at that level then we break below it that's usually when the institutions you, so, to get defensive so i know that in certain in a certain tape you just will be away from the screen yeah because there it's not an it's almost like the wind's me, in your face instead of like you described November, December, the wind was at your back. Yeah. When the wind's in my face and institutions are selling and every instead of buy the dip, it's sell the rip. So that's what separates professionals like you from like ordinary traders. By the way, traders. he's good at recognizing yes. that because he's defined what exactly that means versus, oh, there's the lady was scary on TV today. Time you, to go to cash. You, you can't know, like, do the same thing every time. It's Druck and Miller, no, like wade in the water and know when the fat pitch is coming. But that takes skill. That takes a lot experience. of everything. Exper- yeah. So when so, he but, sees a fat pitch, he'll that, step it up and he'll also decrease when he doesn't. The reason that always resonated so much with me, like if you talk to like professional fishermen, he knows what time of year to go out. Exactly. He knows how deep to go out Perfect and analogy. When. Perfect analogy. There are times where there's just no reason to go out. 
a lot of retail traders don't understand that concept. They think you wake up, turn on CNBC, and start f trading every day. But wait, but that's not, not that's not how to do it. Well, I mean, <laughs> I suppose in your first year, you think that there's an opportunity to trade sometimes, every day, sometimes longer. So all right, so my so so, the, so there are periods of time where you just say like, this is a target rich environment. I need to be in the but market that's right the, now. That's the answer to the question. Why does it matter whether it's a bull market or a bear market? Who gives a shit, JC? Just trade what's in front of you, right? The reason it matters is because you have to decide how to allocate your time. Yeah. Should we be spending more time looking for stocks to buy? Or should we be spending more time looking for stocks to sell? Or should we be in Hawaii with Ami in, or in Vegas yeah. at a concert? Like just not doing anything. Drucker Miller said in a recent interview, what I love about him is he basically said, look, I'm a junkie. I love the markets, but, and then you hear him say this and you're like, one of us, one of us. I love hearing him, but he bad, basically- Bad Nick high five the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he knows when to shift gears, which a lot of people don't have the skills or the ability or the experience. Discipline. And the discipline. Discipline. People so want to he trade. knows when, hey, I'm I a want junkie. To make my money back. I know let's say I normally trade a thousand shares. I'm a junkie. I know it's not a good environment. I'm gonna trade fifty or hundred just to feed my demons that he basically I'm like, love hearing it right. from one so, of the no, best. You know what? He one of the business. He, he leaves his line in the water and he puts his pole down. But That's when it like lines up, yeah. he's gonna go a thousand. He might even have, go five thousand. You're in the market, shares. you feel you feel the bite. Right. So you got to always maybe be in it, but so just that's light it why up. he's been able to stay positive is because he's able to. It's like well, to your point about most retail beginner traders, it's always the same amount every Druck time. Druck is managing right. his own money now too. So like in other words, he can go small in a certain market environment. He could always add, you could always add. It's harder to take away. Yeah. So if he's not big enough, he can get bigger, and then. If he's not big enough and he misses a move, it's his own money. His he doesn't have shit. to answer he's, anybody. He's right. the great Here's what separates yes. Drucker Miller from everybody. When I'm at the blacker table, I think like most people, when I'm winning, I'm cautious, which is the exact opposite. And when I'm losing, I'm like, F I'll bet more. Right. So I'm, that's right. the exact opposite. That's the exact opposite. But that's how most people behave. We at least you recognize that, that out for social media. I feel like that's going to be really helpful. That's how most people <laughs> invest in gamble, is you press when Absolutely. you're losing. But you're recognizing that, and that's that's the more impressive part of the whole thing. Like, you're very, you know. To, to have the discipline, to rec the skills, and the to dis to recognize the period and have yeah. the discipline to shift, that's that's what makes him one of the best. Yeah. Let's do some charts. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's and we, do have, it. we have charts from both of you guys. I'm so excited. Uh, JC. So I want to do something here. All right. If you guys don't mind. No. So I want, I have a few charts that we could discuss and I think they're important and I think we all can weigh in on them. And then I want to do just like a hard hit, you know, just like one after the other, no Light, comments, like lightning go, round. lightning, lightning round. round. And then oh. we can talk about it afterwards. I'm so excited. All right. So I not to like I can't tell wait. everybody what we're doing Let's here, go. but is that, that's all right with well, you? Well, we might have to say <sighs> something during the lightning round because this is a podcast. <laughs> no, but just going to rip through it. All right. I, we'll say some things, but we're going to do that we fast. We might have to at least say what's on <laughs> the screen. Effects. Okay, okay, okay. Or do you just want oohs and ahs? <laughs> Tickers only? We'll, we'll cross. Let's, right. we'll, let's right. discuss. Jesse, you've got the mic. All right. So let's let's... People are like, well, JC, technical analysis only looks at the past. It's like, well. Who do you think he's imitating when he does that? Kind of himself? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's somebody. It still sounds like, it's like It's people. You it's definitely not, have some, somebody in mind. Uh, no, not necessarily. Sometimes right. it, not, not Strasa. Strasa. Everyone no. has that Strasa. voice. Strasa. <laughs> has no, Strasa, Strasa thinks like us. You have somebody. I do. Uh, All right. Right. Anyway. All no right, matter continue. who you are. You're stuck with information from the past, whether yeah. you're a technical analyst or a fundamental analyst, economist. I know people who look at the stars and the moons. Yeah. They're looking at the past also. Everybody. Okay. So let's start there. And coming into this year, it was the first year of this century, I think since sometime in the 90s, that Wall Street strategists came in with a consensus that S&P was going to fall this year. Right. If you only knew this one fact, we should have been all like everyone but, should have been but all. Ryan Dietrich we posted talked about this it. at the end of 2022. We talked about it on this yeah. podcast. This is and yeah. this was incredible. Really quick, in hindsight, if you're a Wall Street chart, strategist, right. you can't lose your job picking six to ten percent for the year. That's right. Because that's your real job. That's, yeah. 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 So the fact that all of them had that, and by the way, coming into this year, 19 strategists have an average of 4,800 on the S and P. Right. Which is basically where it is right now. 1.6 percent, which is a flat year. Give me a break. So I'm just interesting. Go ahead. Guaranteed that won't happen. What? No. Plus, plus But you just said if we knew that now, we know already what they're thinking for this right. year. It's going to be a muted flat year. So this I'll, is what I'll, actually I'll, happened. Not bad, right? Nice. One for the record books. Best first six months of the year in the history of the NASDAQ. Incredible. 50-50 uh, spot on the queues, man. S but this was Q's one of the running joke that we had all, all, all year was it's positioning. Like, how do you explain? It's not a joke. It's not a joke. The positioning going into 2023 
at least from a Wall Street strategist recommended allocation point of view, was insanely out of position. And, and the institutions that follow them. And yes. we have the data. They yes. follow them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're all just, in cahoots. All right. Was, that was an incredible start to a year. Okay. And here's the result. Just proving psychology moves the markets. Yeah. The market fools the majority. This, this whole thing is one big giant psychological shift. Absolutely. That took place over 12 Human months. behavior never changes. One of my favorite Livermore quotes Stocks come and go, human behavior never changes. The same fear and greed that existed 100 years ago exists today and will exist 100 Only years faster from now. today. Now, True. now see now see what these uh, folks did six months later. Uh, so this is, by the way, this, these are the returns going back to October. So this is, which is, I think, when you should, is a good part to, time to pivot. Uh, October like, 22. Yeah, October 22 versus yeah. just Peak. arbitrary year-to-date returns. Peak CPI. October was the CPI down a thousand points in the down and then closed positive. That was the one day. of the rare the days bottom. down two and a half, up two and a half. Yeah. Wild. For the that day. was sick. Wow. Very so rare now look day. what they did in six months later. So they actually came into the back half of the year with the most pessimistic outlook on record. Okay. Um, when is this? Middle this is of June 20. of this year. In the middle of last year. In the middle of last year, yeah. still they bearish. came out with the second half, and they were the most pessimistic on record. Yeah, so they actually, at, this is after the best six months ever in the history of the NASDAQ. They were still, they doubled down. They doubled down. Now you have to understand, to there was a lot of concern about Signature Bank at the time. <laughs> that was it March. It sounds so stupid when you say it out loud. That was March. But yeah, yeah. Nobody had ever heard of these little banks. Who gives a shit? Like, I, I don't understand why they cared so much. There's a lot of concern about First Republic. <laughs> All right, the second half was uh, the last quarter of the year was incredible. The second half was fun. Yeah, the, la the last the last quarter of the year was one of the most blistering. Like, so we had a really shitty actually. We had a really shitty August and September, which is perfectly normal. Which, seasonally. by the way, happens all the time. <laughs> October stabilized, and then November, it was just like it was like somebody flipped a switch. Powell, Powell said they're done, and all right, and all these people that were underallocated the whole year, they, it was just like all right. Forget, by, it was a little bit Nvidia. everything. I don't know. So the sentiment at the end of October on certain sentiment measures Super bearish. was almost as bad as October of really? 22 yeah. on like NAIM and some other ones and, you know, all the other acronyms, whatever, which tells you it's amazing how a three-month 10% correction, August, September, and October of 2022 Shook everybody made out. people more negative uh -huh. than a nine-month bear market in 2022. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, the sentiment three month, got really three dark. Month Black and, Monday was the— August, September, October of Twitter. last year, 23, a, a normal 10% pullback. We broke that out— scared the shit out of everybody. We broke out in May and retested it technically, and it was a normal retest. A partially, I blame us. We put Grantham on. I think that was a great probably, interview. We, that was a great was interview. One of the best, uh, honestly, that was one of the best interviews again. we ever did. Loved he was it. amazing. Yeah. But like that was during that time. And he obviously was pessimistic. There was reasons to be negative, but between the Fed shift and all the pessimism, it was like the perfect, and seasonality. So the RSP. It was the perfect storm. The equal weight and the Russell 2000 were both down on the year on November 9th. And then they finished up yeah, like they 18%. they finished up like 97%. sick run. Yeah, but internals had already, were well on their way higher. In That's fact, what that, I love what he was. In Just, fact, that month, the new lows list peaked on October the 3rd, which is the exact day that the US dollar peaked. So the dollar was actually falling. Emerging markets were ripping all of October. So while he's ex absolutely right about the pessimism at the end of October, if you, people, if those, <laughs> if those people would have just taken the time to go look and see what the stocks were doing, Microsoft was up seven and a half percent in October. The work he does on the internals, like really, that's, that's ties the room together. Really ties the room together. It does. Okay. No, it's great. Um, and then to Fami's point. So then here we are now. So market, uh, since the beginning of the S&P 500 in 1957, uh, the S&P 500 averages over 10% return a year. And these guys, after whiffing this year, now they're only expecting 1.6% uh, for next year. That's like a, that's a cop out. In my, they're like, what's the S&P now? All right. As long as I've well, been doing the average, this, they, they the pay average yeah. 6 the to 10%. So it's they not pay, like you just throw 6 to 10%. You can't lose your job. Uh, JP Morgan's super bearish on the year. I think Deutsche Bank has the high target. Um, and then in the middle, it's a lot of firms hovering right around where we're, we close the year. It skews pessimistic on the banks. The banks tend to be more wrong than maybe oh, some right? independent strategists. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's one. There's like one Super Bowl at a firm I never heard of, Capital Economics, who's at like 5,500. That's, but that's the high target. They're like, there's, nobody hot, yeah. there's nobody even near him. Almost it's everybody is, firm, is like, hovering like right Peretz around Like Peretz Fami and Prince Street or something. Yeah. Peretz so, Fami. Hey, I like <laughs> I that, Fox. I don't hate it. <laughs> don't hate it. <laughs> We're starting our own uh, So anyway, as Fami already uh, mentioned. I didn't know you had this slide, but thank you. I, it's, it's... We look at the same thing. All right, but keep going because this is all Fami stuff. I wanted to include Fami type stuff here. Consumer sentiment. 
This is uh, after a monster year. Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ all close at new all-time monthly closing highs. Highest monthly close ever. Um, European equities all over all over the world making new all-time highs. Consumer sentiment incredibly. How is University of Michigan sentiment so low when the team was undefeated? I don't get that. <laughs> have you have oh, you spent any there? have you spent any time there? <laughs> They're doing this sentiment in the dead of December in Michigan. Ugh. What is it? It's the Ann Arbor Housewife Survey. What do you think they're so pessimistic? <laughs> Hang on, they're not they only polling people about? in Michigan. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm teasing my uh, No, they no, because people don't care about the dad. They care about they rent literally and gas. Are calling people on fucking landline people care, phones. People do you care about care what, what they, the opinions are. No. They care about no. the wrong things. Correct. Because well, the data is very consistent. They're pessimistic at times that it's great to be buying stocks. First, first, I think the people answering the survey they don't own stocks. continues to skew older and older. So what? Second, I think they're answering these questions politically. So what? This is an audience that's it's either st- watching still Fox News or it's MSNBC. Still, it's still Great, consistent. so what? It's still consistent. Thing. So what? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I Listen, I'm not a survey guy. When these people are are angry, it's great to be buying stocks historically. True. Period. True. But what if they're not angry about anything that has to do with For stocks? the record, it's one data point. There's a zillion reasons uh, why investors do things, but this is an interesting point that, by the way, adds up with the other things we're seeing. Yeah. It's not like it's this is coming out together. of left field. It's, it's putting them all together. Sentiment, 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 sentiment in going. general is going. in the dump. Sell side strategists, institutions. We could talk about the record cash levels. Uh, this, so this is more interesting to me. This is a composite yeah. of all of the all of them. All of these things. Mm-hmm. Tell me. How, so tell tell the audience what's in this composite and why it matters. So it's the American Association of Individual Investors (AAII), which tends to be the most erratic. And and most short term sensitive, which, which probably is, makes whatever sense. Whatever the market did last week, that's what the yeah. it moves right. the fastest. Yeah, yeah. So it, people can be jump to the gun a little quick with this one. Be like, oh, everyone is bullish. Yeah. Eh. It's, it's the, the most. The it's the most volatile. Volatile. Yeah. One. Uh, I like okay. these. Then you got the other. investors' intelligence, where there are the advisories. Which is an oxymoron. Then you've got uh, NAIM. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Investors intelligence. Oxymoron. Oxymoron. That's um, like jumbo I'm, here to, I'm here to add value. Here to add value. <laughs> the NAIM is much more powerful when they're pessimistic. They tend to be optimistic during bull markets. Yeah. So it's more powerful when Same they're more bearish. Same thing with AII. Sentiment the, measures are more accurate on the yeah. bearish yes, side than bull, the bullish side. If there's a lot of bulls, that's not necessarily sell everything. Yeah. If everyone's bearish, you got to buy something. Right. Absolutely right. Definitely. Um, you know, the VIX, put call ratios, just adding the, the quant stuff in there. In, in in other words, it's what people are doing, not so much what they're saying. Um, and and we're not, we're in the middle. All right, so we had the fat pitch in the fall, and now we're sort of in no man's Wait, land in terms of sentiment. Th- what should this be doing? Should this be... Should should this be rising with the market? By the way, it's smoothed out for four. It's four weeks smoothed out. Also, okay. so, right, so, so when, so when is this up. as of when? This will turn up. When is this? Well, by the way, up? this means if the lower it goes, the more optimistic right. people are. The more oh, risk there is. Right. The higher it goes, the more pessimistic there is. The more opportunity. So you can see so last year. This isn't year. even outrageously low yet. That's my point. Okay. It's, it's in the middle, okay. which brings me to my quote from my favorite Long Island guy ever, Walt Whitman. Throw it up, Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> Oh, me. Oh, look at this. Oh, that's great. Yeah. What did I say? Read it. I don't want to read my own quote. What kind JC, of quote? JC, read it. Tops are a process, bottoms are an event, and middles are a motherfucker. Yeah, I was really, that was it sounds like Tracy Morgan, not Yeah, that Josh was good. Brown. That was really good. That's, a, that's out, right. It does. That sounds like something <laughs> Tracy Morgan would say. That's a, that's a true quote that I said. I what know. do I mean by that? I don't even agree with most of it. Uh, tops are a process. And- <laughs> <laughs> Why is it your favorite quote? <laughs> Wait, what do you disagree with? Wait, Top seller or process? Say your so favorite quote bottoms, say so. I don't even agree with so it. So are bottoms. So I don't disagree. But the the point here is that middles are a mother Hardest thing. When you're, we, yeah, I agree Go to with the that. When you're middling. Like middling. 2015, 2016. I have Be, more quotes. Because most of the time, things are not bottoming or topping. They are middling. Think about the middle. Well, that's true. I actually this remember guy. writing about that. Look at this guy. Do you remember what was going on in 2012? We hadn't yet hit the old highs of 07 yet. Yeah. It's like March we didn't, 13. The S&P 500 didn't do that until 2013. Yeah. Um, but everybody was calling the top because of how far it had run. And it's like, why is this a top? I don't know. It went up a lot. That's 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 the, that's the logic. Because by that logic, it's always at a top after it goes up. It's not always topping. So. Also, people just had their recency bias that the great financial crisis had just happened. Yeah. Just like now we had the COVID and the other R- things, recency right? Recency bias is amazing. The recency the bias is a mother And go back and go back. Don't do this, but hypothetically, go back and read uh, financial columns, not blogs, columns like the FT. 
and Wall Street Journal. Go back and read what they were talking about in 2012 as the market was racing back to the old highs. They were talking about Greece and Cyprus. Like mm-hmm. every hour of the day, they were live blogging Greek finance ministers um, wear, wearing a lav mic into the urinal. Like, what does the splash sound Didn't like? Didn't one of the Olsen twins marry one of those? Was it maybe the French guy? That's always a top. When the Olsen twins get involved, like Lance Armstrong topped very, right? So, yeah, I mean, that was it. You know, Once the Olsen twins are in the picture, I think you want to be making sales. So, yeah. Or, or a Kardashian or there was No, there was like a high-ranking Greek. They don't know about me. I think it might have been a Frenchman. I can't remember. I'm Yeah, I'm totally yeah. making all this yeah. up. No, one of the Olsen twins married a, f- a, f- a French businessman, which is also an oxymoron. Um, <laughs> a Parisian businessman, right? I don't know. Let's John, edit all this out. See if we can just, yeah, we can just piss, or off, leaving the, it on. piss okay. off the entire okay. crowd. Um, all right, so just want to kind of set the stage here real quick. So yes. um, Him. This is the breath thrust that you were just describing, Josh. Uh, so this is just an example. These are the percentage of stocks above the making three-month highs. You know, highest that we've seen in years. These are the things we see early on in cycles. So the conversation bearish. we were having before. Right? What is the significance of a 63-day new three high? It's three months. That's three months? Average okay. of 21 trading yeah. days So this is the percentage of stocks at three-month highs. Uh, wow. It hit, it hit 50%. Yeah. At, at, when is that? At the end of the year? Right at the end of the year? Yeah. That's higher than even anything in 2020. December. Yeah. That's wild. So I mentioned this to Michael. Kramer opened up the new year on CNBC that morning, just basically like, find something and sell it. <laughs> like when it gets this take, hot. Take a little off. The and table. I, it sounds like rule of thumbby and we hate that stuff. But I remember him in 99 talking about, he used to talk about this, uh, this diner by the Holland Tunnel because he lived in Summit, New Jersey. He used to come into Wall Street and there was like a diner and you'd stop there for breakfast. He used to talk about the the griddle was like 500 degrees. It was so hot, like you crack an egg and have to scoop it off immediately after. The market does go through periods of time where it gets like that. I don't know of a better way to um, measure it other than two things. This, the percentage of, st- the percentage of stocks making highs on any time frame. And then the second thing is just like looking at the slope itself of the index. Like when you have a parabolic move, again, it's not a top. It could definitely be a good reason, though. Go two to slides have less exposure. next. Go two slides next. This is what Josh is talking about. So it's five thousand points in two months for the Dow. So right, and I I would imagine if you pull this back like to a three year chart, back. it's still noticeable. John, go up one. There it is. There. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's a top. I'm just saying like we should maybe calm down a little bit. Is that, uh, that's reasonable. Well, I'll show you. So transports still haven't broken out. Go next, John. To the trainings, yeah. So they haven't broken out yet, right? Uh, but it looks constructive. Doesn't look bearish. We're Doesn't look toppy. We don't do trainees. All right, but I do. No, no, no. I we don't. Very no, no, no. We don't say that word. We say, I'm telling you, transports. Transports. Or transportation Americans. Got it. So okay. homies. I can't say homies either. No, you can say that. They don't like when you say train. On, so I'm telling you on TV. All the right. old school guys were were still saying like, well, take a look at the trainees. It's transports. Really? Yeah, you're gonna get us all f-ing canceled over here. All right, you guys pinched. Well, you guys all pinched. Well, look, go next. I don't know. I don't know about all that, but here's here's what you're looking at. So this is a lot. You know, a lot of growth, a lot of tech. You know, right, farms. You right, got so time to digest. Fifty percent of the Nasdaq is technology. Thirty percent of the S and P 500 almost is technology. We're back to those former highs. Seems like a logical level for some of these indexes to digest, but doesn't mean that's that it's a sell everything market. There are still things that can do well, even if tech is consolidating, right? Absolutely. That's not concerning for you, though. Like when you see, when you see us get turned away at those old highs. No, it's what a, it's. <clears throat> I have a slide on happen. what a cup with handle is. Okay. What a cup with handle is everyone who bought at the previous level, and it comes all the way back around. And you ever say that prayer, like just get me back to even, yes. and I want to get out. That's what creates the handle or sellers around that time. So you wait for sellers to dry up and then you take out the highs. So you don't, right. So as long as you're not retracing back down to the bottom of the cup itself, you're okay. No, yeah. As long as it's like in the upper third. Okay. Yeah. So you think that's the setup now in January? I do. Yeah. That's what I think Maybe even Maybe even the first quarter. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe even the, longer. Where the, where the gains are in the second half of an election year. Yeah. Okay. Which makes perfect sense. But doesn't mean that there won't be stocks doing I well. I slide on that too. Look at, the, look at the equally weighted index now outperforming the cap weighted, win, weighted index at the same level that it started doing that so back in 2000. You'll be so proud of me. I shared this chart. This exact chart was a mystery chart a couple of weeks ago. And what are your thoughts? And Josh, and I, Josh goes, would you buy this chart? I said, eh, probably not. 
<laughs> but it looks good. <laughs> looks pretty good Equal now. Looks pretty good. Looks yeah. yeah, it looks better. So what this means is think about what's in the equally weighted index. Think about what's in the cap weighted index. The cap weighted index is going to have a lot more tech growth. So if the equally weighted index is outperforming, it's not a breath thing. It doesn't mean like this year, the equally weighted index was underperforming. People were like, oh, that's because the market's about to crash. It's like, no, bro. It's because the cap this weighted year, is loaded you mean, up with tech. You mean 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 Jesse, yeah. Look, I made this chart. Loaded up with tech. So it's underweight information technology, the RSP by 16%, the communications by 5%. That's the whole thing. It's a whole kit and caboodle. It's overweight, significantly overweight. Everything else. Industrials, real yeah. estate, utilities, yeah. materials. Right. Everything else. Of course. And then you can see what, what's really going on here. Um, over the last couple of days, you've seen some rotation. But this rotation started a couple of months ago. Walk us through this. What are we looking at? So on top, we're looking at small caps versus large caps, right? Russell 2000, small caps versus Russell 1000, large oh, caps. Bounce. Declining pretty much all year uh, last year. And then equally weighted, uh, underperforming cap weighted until the last couple of months. And then this is really just an extension Same of thing. things like industrials yeah, versus yeah. tech. You know, tech mostly being the denominator there. You can replace the numerator. That looks good. XLI over XLK. That looks like it could it could do some damage. What are the stocks moving the XLI? Well, none of them, actually, because the XLI is very diversified. Yeah. There's no stock that represents more than they 4%. Almost just, they almost like just throw everything into the XLI that's left over. Yeah. Because it has transports. And staffing companies. Yeah. And but then it also has truckers. like manufacturing. Yeah, these things yep. look good. Engineering. Cat, Honeywell, 3M. Well, yeah, go. Yeah, we'll, look good. We'll, get, we'll get into it. Um, but it's really anything but these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, now. I like this. So Wait, why? Why did you get so excited it's about good, this? It's a good chart. So the folks at Round Hill came up with uh, their big tech ETF in April of last year. And they on November the 9th, they decided to change it directly to the Magnificent 7. What was it called prior? ETF. It was called the Round Hill Big Tech ETF. Okay. Now it's the Magnificent 7 ETF as of November the 9th. And this is a ratio of that particular ETF versus the S&P 500. Right on, right on schedule. More like right the, on more schedule. More like the lag 7. Yeah. Shout to, shout to Round Hill, though. Yeah, Will Hershaw. Oh, no, not bad. Yeah. 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 We uh, love this love these 7 guys. ETF. Yeah, I'll buy it right ETF. now. Yeah. All right. What, uh, what, wait, then this, go, go then, back. Go back one. So if that turns out to be like a six-month, a year, three-year top, it would be pretty poetic. We've seen that before. I'd be surprised if it wasn't. It's happened yeah. a lot. I would be surprised if it were. A three-year top? No, three-year, yeah. no. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm but just it, saying. But by like, the way, it goes back to the chart prior. Go back to the chart prior just to remind everybody. It's it's all the same story. Yeah. It's all the same rotation. But name changes of things frequently happen right around a period of time where, like, everyone agrees. Yeah. Everyone agrees the Magnificent Seven are pretty magnificent. Yeah, but shout out to Round Hill because it was a marketing decision that was made to appeal oh, yeah. to the sentiment at the time. Oh, I would have. I would have done. I, it. Still, I still think yeah. Jim Cramer missed a huge opportunity not doing an only fangs page. He could have only fangs. Only fangs. Only fangs. Uh, yeah. Not bad. He not missed. Bad. He missed it. Not bad, he Tommy. Missed, missed it. Anyway. And then this is the this is the this is the chart. That's all I do is add value. This is it. <laughs> this is the big one. It's the only one that matters. The dollar. Look at those peaks. Look at end of 2016, that peak. Look at the early 2020 peak. What happened after those peaks? Stocks, Stocks ripped. But what is all this noise above the gray bar? What is that? That was more recently. So that was the end of 22. We peaked in October of 22. And that crash in the dollar up there, that was the fourth quarter of last year into this year. Oh, I didn't realize how far back this chart was going. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So what do you, what do you think is what do you think is happening here? So if you're a stock market bull and you are are making the bet the stocks are going to go higher, it's not so much that you want a weaker dollar, you need a weaker dollar. The weaker dollar will coincide with a rally in stocks. But they're has, but they're concurrent, no? Like it's a, they they it's the same thing. Not on a daily basis, but if this chart breaks down and breaks those former highs, yeah. We go back down to the 2020 lows. Mm. That's a Dow 50,000, S&P 6,000. Don't you see, but don't you see a lot of support there? What would you guess happens? We've seen support there. Yeah. My so, bet is it breaks. I don't know when, but if any strength you see in the dollar is going to coincide with stocks under pressure, mm. this is this is it. We've talked about it here every single episode because yeah. it's the only thing that actually matters. This is it. Dude, Dow 50,000. Do you have any idea who I'm booking for Future Proof? <laughs> you f***ing like Jay-Z and Beyonce. Well, I'll call them because that's where we're going. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I like it. I, I want, I know Fami brought some charts, but I just want to do a quick, you know, just, right? What would you call it? Lightning Power round. hour? Lightning round. Lightning, Lightning round. round. Right Go. Power hour or something else. Power hour. All right. Ready? 
Ready, John. Global Dow, all-time highs. This is 19% financials, 14% industrials. Technology is only 13%, so just think about that. Next, Global 100 Index, all-time highs. Next. Wow. Euro stock 600. So this is the equivalent of the S&P 1500. So yeah, includes like the smalls, mids, and large. New 52 week highs. Next. Euro stocks 50. Looks this is great. the Dow, essentially, of, the, of, the, of Europe. New multi-decade highs. Germany, all-time highs. Kind of a big deal. Outside of the United States, what's the most important index in the world? I'd argue Germany. New all-time highs. Not Japan. Also making 33-year highs. Yeah. So... We'll take it. We'll take it. France, all-time highs, despite uh, uh, what people might be saying about, you know, some of these uh, discretionary stocks. Uh, we can keep going. A lot of industrials here. Uh, Denmark, new all-time highs there for the Copenhagen 20. Keep going. There's the Oslo index pushing up against new all-time highs. We can just keep going, right? That's the whole point. Sweden, look at the Stockholm 30, new 52-week highs. <laughs> Milan, the Indice de Borsa, 15-year highs. Look at London 100, wow. pushing up against new highs. Oh, shit. Bro I didn't even realize that. Broadening out to the 350. You know how much technology is in the London index? Zero. Almost none. Zero. Yeah. Uh, look at Poland, the Wig 20, new all-time highs. Pronounce that shit. Nope. <laughs> um, here we're looking at the Dutch master right here, uh, pushing like up against new 52 week highs. Hungary, new all-time highs <laughs> in Budapest. Stuff. I need Google Maps for half these countries. I don't even know where these You know, we talk are. about Italy making new 15-year highs, not known for their stock market. It's the food, the people, the booze. Same with, you know, same with Greece. Greece, look, the whole thing is tourism. It's a Kardashian bottom. It's yeah. a big round bottom. All right, keep going. India, new all-time highs for the Nifty 50. Look at the Nifty 500 next if you want to broaden it out. All-time highs. Bank Nifty, these are the financials in India, new all-time highs. Uh, Indian small caps, new all-time highs. Remember when they said small cap stocks weren't working? New all-time highs for Indian small caps. Japan, 33-year wow. highs. That's cr that's crazy chart, uh, uh, Nikkei. Australia, new all-time highs. Um, Taiwan, new 52-week highs. Pushing against new all-time highs. Look at the Jakarta Index, new all-time highs. In Indonesia, uh, Brazilian Bavespa, new all-time highs coming out of a multi-year base. We can keep going. Look at the Bolsa de Valores. This is in Peru, new all-time highs. Chile, pushing up against new all-time highs, the second highest close in the history of the country. Argentina, this is the ETF, so you're not getting the currency situation. New all-time highs. Mexico, new all-time highs. I mean, Canada, new 52-week highs. I mean... What, are these so bad? So there's, 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 <laughs> there's 195 countries. He just covered. We're in a global recession. I guess this is so bearish. We should have more of these more often. This feels right. Yeah. First of all, round of applause. That's well nice. done. That's nice. Why do you think there's so little awareness that like thousands of stocks around the world are hitting 52 week highs? Like, you know, it's one of my favorite know? quotes of yours. Yeah. You don't turn on the weather channel when it's 80 degrees and sunny outside. Yeah. So that's because it. Because the news is all negative. You you tune in when it's you know. You turn on the weather channel when there's a hurricane, tornado, or blizzard coming. My point is the news is always negative. You're not going to hear That's this. That's it, right? Because, like, what he just did, what you just did, never would not that. appear never. on financial any channel television ever. ever. Financial television's all-time ratings, highest ratings ever, 08, 09 right. crisis. Right. When it's all-time highs, no one cares to turn on the news. Even in the old school days when Peter Jennings or Tom Brokaw would start off the nightly news, they would never start with the stock market unless it was a big down. Unless it was a crash. Yeah. Same thing with us. Our traffic is is nothing in a bull market. Like when, when there's so nothing to talk about, that's the reason why. That's no negative problem news. In, uh, higher, higher, higher the VIX, higher the, VIX, the, higher the clicks. So Shout that's out, why no Shout one out. no one knows any of this stuff because why? Because who, who gets paid for telling yeah, people? Yeah, no, sunshine and rainbows. Who cares about Nobody. that? Nobody. That's no, right. It's not news. We want fires. Right, Fafi, you've got some charts? Yeah. I I don't know if they're... John. First of all, round, round, of, round of applause for the All-Star Charts show. That was nice. really, I mean, truly, that was, that that was, was all-star. That was epic. You did not disappoint. Joe? Appreciate it. Measure I, up. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't bring any. I don't even have a laptop. All I, right. I, I, put, I put them in the... Don't worry. Don't worry. We... we Going back to, okay, so this is what I was going back to, the strength. This is this year on the S&P or maybe the NASDAQ. Um, the strength in November and December is part of my reason. Like, I think we could see a 10 to 15% year this year because of this strength to what we talked about earlier leads to more strength. So next chart is, I believe, uh, Zweig Breath Thrust, which is Mar Marty, Marty Zweig. Indicator. Marty Zweig uh, came up with this. He interpreted this as signaling a new bull market. It's, this is what we're talking about. Strength leads to more strength, and these are a lot of rare uh, technical things. So 18 of them since World War II. 
and this is from Ryan Dietrich, it shows the point is it bodes well for the next six to 12 months where it's higher a year later every single time. It's a rare signal. It's why breath thrust, you can Google it, basically going from oversold to an incredible technical strength. When did this trigger? November? Early November. This okay. is November 3rd on the bottom there of, okay. of last year. So next one, these are a whole bunch of things. Here's another one. Percentage of S&P stocks above their 50-day crossed above 90 since 2000. It's higher 98% of the time 12 months later. Average gain, 14%. Is it a sure thing? No, but it's just statistics probabilities to help. Next one. Um, this is another rare one from the guys at Sediment Trader. For the fourth time since 1950, McClellan's summation index crossed 1,500. The only other precedents were ending the bear market in 70, 74, and early 2010s. So again, these are just more statistics, probabilities of all the strength we just talked about. And I think the last one here is, um, or not the last one of this segment, is when the S&P gains more than 10% in November, December, like it did in 2023, following year is again, six months, year a year out. So this is for people, the time frame six so what months are the, to a year. Let's give people what the numbers are. Uh, you, next year fall is up to 19.5% on average over the next on year. On average, which means a lot of years are much better than that. Yeah. 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 So now someone might be screaming, okay, you guys are way too bullish. Like this is ridiculous. We're but, not bullish. The market is right, but the next slide, oh the next slide is a reminder. <laughs> no, JC, am I being real? It's not no. us. It's not our. No. Opinion. We're just interpreting what it's we're seeing. We're just I, interpreting. I agree. So it's our opinion. Before everyone, how is it an opinion? If, if markets are at all-time highs, how is that? How no, is the, that us no, being bullish? It's not how, everybody has the same how time it was created. But everybody's opinion is in the stock market. How okay, it was created. Your interpretation created. that that's bullish is all-time not... highs are not an interpretation. No, there are no, no, people no. that would How say all-time highs was the amazing are, a, strength. are a signal that you should be selling. But they're not. We know that. No, but that's Empirically, not that's not an that. opinion. It was created with an the incredible data says all-time highs are not bearish. Depends I'm sorry. on your time horizon. But just a reminder. Yeah, fine. Can we see a pullback? Yeah, obviously. Anytime. Over the last fifty years, to your point, over the last fifty years, the average S and P pullback about fourteen and a half percent. So this is a reminder for everyone saying, "Oh, you're too bullish," isn't that? We just had an eleven percent pullback in August, September, October of we last did, year. We did. That's right. So my so that was ten point three on a closing basis. The point is. You're going to have pullbacks. Here's too bullish. I think the market is going to be up more than 20% this year. That's too bullish. But you can still have an intra-year pullback. 0%. I forget like the next one. I don't know if it's oh, presidential. Oh, I guarantee we will. Of course we'll Presidential cycle might be the next one. Why the are you shaking slide. your head? <laughs> what? Come on. Oh, say it. Batnick thinks everybody has his time horizon. Like what's nobody gives a shit about you and your time You're, horizon. Why are you planting thoughts into my brain? What's, You're projecting. What's I, your I don't think everybody has what's my, your, time, what's your, what's your time horizon. My time horizon, horizon. Is, is infinite. Forever. Infinite. All right, then. Yeah. I'm investing money now that I personally will never spend. I walked into his office. He has one minute candles. That's what do you mean? That's true. <laughs> no, no not now. Opposite. Not now. That was 10 years ago. More than 10 years ago. No, you, you showed Michael's me a five minute bullish chart. until it starts going down. Yeah, obviously. So there's still going to be pullbacks. This one I like because, you know, it actually coincides. I found this very interesting. The 10 worst weeks of the year, the last 50 years, if you notice, almost every one of the worst weeks is the week after options expiration. Regular cycle OPEX, old school, third Friday of every month, almost every worst week of the year comes afterwards. And there's just an amazing mechanics of- Still, options that's still going on? Still going on. Options coming off the books. Like for example, a lot of people buy leaps for January of 2024. When those come off the books, maybe you'll see a sell off after them. I'm not saying it will, but you could see it because of the leverage, the just the whole mechanics of the markets. This is still going on, something to keep in mind. So when people are like, you're too bullish, I'm like, no, there's gonna be pullbacks. This might be a time when you how might see this? one. How about this? Josh said, how come not everybody knows the charts that JC just shared with us? It's not just that the media wants to give you bad news. People want bad news. Our audience would be much more happy if they tune in. Not much more the, happy, but they would rather us say, "Be careful, watch the out." The human mind like, is trained to worry about what's gonna, what's wrong. Right, of course. What's around the corner? So the comment section would be much happier with us if we were like, "Guys, you should probably watch out. Like, this is not the time." We, you don't get credit for being bullish. You sound like an idiot. My point is, the strength leads to digestion, and this the, to. The point about time frame, it's later on, possibly this year. So you know, so you There's know one on presidential cycle too, real quick. I think that's the next wait, one. Wait, wait, hold hold that. Hold okay. that. Go ahead. Sorry. So you know, so you know Nick Majuli put just, out a book. Just keep buying. Just keep buying. Love it. And I think he put it out in 2021. 21 or 22? Mm. 22. He sold a hundred thousand copies of the book. So that's not the problem. When the market was down in 20, 2022, which it was almost relentlessly throughout the course of the, the first half of the year. People would like, as a joke, like throw his book up, like like the cover of his book. 
and it was you know it's funny like I I he put it out they like clearly right didn't before, read it and get the point I think he might have put it at the end of 21 and then in 2022 the market falls 20 percent and the Nasdaq falls 30 well, if you listen to him you'd be doing great if you listen exactly. to him you'd be doing great so that's not the problem I'm just saying on the way up to Michael's point people weren't like posting his book cover it'll never happen yeah he might no one else is like hey Nick remember you said this good job man nobody. Someone should write "Just Keep Selling." Yeah, but you want to know <laughs> something. You, you want to know sell more copies. To Nick's point, buying. of course brilliant. it will. You want to know sell a million more copies. To Nick's point, <laughs> just keep selling. Everybody keeps talking about the two-year returns. Oh, <laughs> some bull market. We're just back to the former highs. Like, what kind of bull market just gets us back to the former highs? If you take a, an anchored VWAP back to those highs, which I do, the, the average buyer is very, very, very profitable. Exactly. What do you mean? If because if you bought as the market's going down, you, yeah. have, you add if more the shares. The average buyer since his book came out is incredibly profitable. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Average We have the average data. Cost. Dollar cost averaging is undefeated. If you, you should, write a blog you post. You see my 401k. It's, it's out, I guarantee you it's outperforming every you know it all on buy, Twitter. You're buying on the way down. I, that's all I do. It's, yeah. it's $23,000 into, into the account every year regardless of price. You do that through a year like 2022. You're going to look better than you, almost anyone. If you have a longer 10, 20, 30 year, 30 year time frame retirement, you want corrections, as you guys have said so Need many them. times. Got to yeah. have them. This is on quarterly returns of presidential cycles. So um, I, I, this is an old slide, but it's the last four we're concerned about. So the fourth year of a presidential cycle showing that the first quarter is pretty muted and the gains usually come in the second half of the year. For this year. This is the, yeah. this this is this is the is actual the election fourth, year. Yeah, fourth year. Okay. So... Second year tends to be ugly, which it was in 2022. Uh, third year tends to be the best. Oh, which look at that. Was. Okay, so year third, four Q1 is year a flat four quarter. Year four Q1. All the returns come in the third year, basically. The, the third year is, is statistically about 20%. Monster. And the uh, worst year is the second. Terra Nova, Terra Nova did that with us and just absolutely nailed it. The uh, presidential cycle gave yeah. us like great, a great chart, really great explanation, and... 2023 was one no, of those we years spoke, where it really Joe worked. Joe was on talking about midterm election years. The next, like the 12 months after the midterm this, elections are super bullish. The yeah. second they year is the worst. Third year is the best. And the fourth, fourth is tends, the to be, tends to be oh, weighted. Oh, the second year is the worst because that's the midterm. Which was 2022. Yeah. That's the like third the, year averages over 20, which is what we got last you year. You buy the midterm elections. You buy the midterm because yeah. that's when things are shitty. Which was that's the top, that's the best October time. of 2022, okay. midterm election. I forget if there's another one on the, the next one is on presidential. Uh, there isn't? Okay. Okay, no, this is on the Fed that I was going to talk about, but that's something totally different. And we can, or we can talk about that. Let's do it. It's not as good as his stuff. Chart it up. All right, so the other thing I wanted to talk about is I joked last time I was here that everyone's obsessed with macro. And Josh made a good point because interest rates affect everything, credit cards, housing, all that stuff, lending. But I call this Metallica macro because nothing else matters but the Fed. So I just say, hey, if you're managing a global macro fund, $10 billion, I get it. You got to. But if you're helping your mom with her Roth IRA, stop yeah. obsessing over macro. Wrong game. The only thing that matters is the Fed. And two things. Is the Fed starting an interest rate hiking cycle or ending it? Or are they adding liquidity to the system or, or taking and providing a uh, – what's the word? Uh, um a constructive, uh, uh, accommodative environment, or are they taking liquidity out and providing a restrictive environment? Yeah. I went back, I'm a big fan of like IBD, William O'Neill, those follow through days, which signal when the big institutions come into the market. So I went back with a few examples throughout history. This is 2010. We had the flash crash in May of 2010. Bernanke, the Fed chair at the time, came out on September 1, where that big red arrow is. September 1 came out at Jackson Hole and announced QE2. And I remember that happening to you. Yeah. We were all tweeting our heads off. That was a- <laughs> We were. <laughs> we were. Yeah. That was a signal of follow through days are a sign, just to keep it simple, of the institutions coming back in. The institutions came back in because you focus on whether the Fed is starting or ending an interest rate hiking cycle or providing liquidity or taking liquidity out. Look at that this rally. Is, this is, it's an amazing rally. It was like 36% to the end of the year. So I think this, is was, oh, this is 2010? 2010. You could have bought anything. October in that, 1. In that oh, everything. Chipotle, everything. Herbalife, everything, everything Net, went crazy. Early Netflix. Yeah. Like uh, Lulu had just so come Lulu around. Lululemon did. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. a monster. You're absolutely right. Now, the next slide is an example from going throughout history, recent history, 2018. The Fed's raising rates, we corrected almost 20% in the fall, October of 18. To the fall of 18, right? Uh, Powell came out on January 4th and says, we're going to be patient raising rates. 
and that was a follow through day signal to rally. Again, just my point about this is don't focus on housing starts, jobs reports, all that stuff is lagging indicators. I want to focus macro on all I care about is what the Fed is saying. Remember Mnuchin? Wait, you know what he did? He, he, on the low Remember is when the, the meme- Nobody when he, worry! The meme when he got on the phone yeah. and called the banks was the dead he low called on- called the banks uh, and the low said, on, on Everybody, the, everything's fine, there's plenty of liquidity, nobody wait, pay. why did he do that? For no that reason. Was wild. That was wild. It was literally on the low. Was that Trump's lawyer? It was uh, the head of the no, Treasury. He was the Treasury lawyer. Secretary. <laughs> It was Steve Bannon. He said liquidity All right, is not so, an issue. So that's when we said, and now here's another example, extreme examples. The next slide is, is COVID. Talk about three things that happened. Um, they kept rates at zero and provided an insane amount of liquidity. Stimmies. Uh, stimulus. With the red arrows in March, April. March, end of March, early April. They yeah. did and expanded their balance sheet. They did more they bought more treasuries in six weeks off of that low than they did in the nine years combined from 09 to 2018. You know what everybody was saying Balance at the time? Balance sheet just went crazy. Myself included, when stocks made new highs, and I'm making fun of myself. You're telling me the economy's better now than it was pre-pandemic? Yeah, This yeah. is not I the point. That. Focus, that's what I mean. Nothing I else matters except for the Fed. Now, the opposite of this is the next slide, where these are examples of the Fed cutting rates or providing liquidity. The next slide is the end of 20. 21 into the bear market of 2022. The next slide is those three arrows is when the Fed did the exact opposite. They said, we're going to stop our bond buying at the end of 2022. All the big volume comes in, we have a leg down. Then they said, we're going to raise rates in 2022. And, and then in January, mid-January is when they said, we're going to reduce our balance sheet. So all that matters to me, to keep it simple, is the Fed raising rates, or stop starting a cycle or ending a cycle. In this case, they were starting. Uh, are they providing liquidity like they did in QE2 and and oh, after COVID or what after the COVID news? Or are they taking liquidity out of the system, which is what they're doing here? What was so savage about that chart, look at the rally from June through August of 2022. There had never been a period in time where a, a bear market rally captured 50% of the previous gains and then made new lows. And we did that. That rally from June to August June was to brutal because then it made new lows in October. You're saying it's never captured 50%. Uh, so, so to, the balance to from JC's June to point, August, he said stocks bottomed in June. From that year. Ju well, the majority of stocks did. Right. From June to August, stocks captured, the SP captured 50% of the losses and then made new lows. That had never happened before after a 20% decline. But you know what? Now I just Something thought about this. Something that has never happened before happens every day. Because, all the time. All because the time. Powell, that's when Powell had that Jackson Hole speech and he, he just threw you know, it out. A lot, and, of, a lot of big strategists agree with what you're saying. They just look at it differently. They focus on money supply. Yes. They look liquidity. at M2. M2. How much liquidity is being taken from the system or, or pushed into the system? It's another way of doing like it. Like Brian Westbury talks about that. Tony Dwyer is a big- oh, Those guys uh, are brilliant with that those stuff. Those are big money supply yeah. guys. Yeah. But it's the same concept. Yeah. I, I agree with that. So like in other words- if you're a macro dilettante and that's not like your whole focus, don't worry about tracking 75 indicators. Focus on As, the big one. I'm liquidity. just focused on liquidity and the most. I like important. that idea. Yeah, that's it. Just keep it simple. Yeah, that's how's a great it, idea how's for this for two audience. bullish? How's this for two bullish? Let's open this point. Oh, shit. All <laughs> right. Let me show you how to do it. Go ahead. Well, it's got to be four o'clock somewhere, right? You know that that uh, bottle opener is yours too? It says all star charts. How about that? How about that? JC's providing liquidity. You're, you are like one of the number one liquidity providers uh, that I know of. Uh, Joe, we have more? I brought more, but let's, you let's want to get into Keep it? Going. Yeah, going. let's go. All right. I want you guys to come. So, yeah. So, that basically, the whole end of this is, uh, this is this year. That strength in November was when Powell uh, hinted that they're done and December confirmed it. So, yes. uh, next slide is on trading stocks, I believe. Um, okay. This is, totally so, this is so great. Take us totally, to school. Totally, totally shifting topics. All right. Most people should not be trading individual stocks. I've come to that conclusion. And everyone's going to yell at me. And, but the problem, the reason it doesn't work, or the reason why most people shouldn't is because people have trouble making decisions. They buy garbage stocks. They can't sell. They can't do it. They, they just have a lot of trouble making decisions. If you are... <laughs> if you are... <laughs> don't, don't be distracted by my <laughs> sommelier. That's all right. <sighs> That's what my, level, that's what my, level that's, sum are you? He is. He's a level are four like a level sum. sum. No. Three. What are you? Are you I, uh, you're officially a sum, though, right? I am. Yeah. I am. I just uh, applied for the advanced sommelier. 
Nice. Do most sommeliers uh, drink glasses of wine out of out of scotch glasses, or <laughs> are we breaking that? You want to know something? Uh, talk to the best sommeliers. They don't give a f All that glass thing, that's just, that's just a racket. Is that right? It's just a racket. Really? It's just marketing. Like all those riddle stuff. Like it's just, So we can go paper cups? All right. I like it. Red go cup. to Italy. Go to the most beautiful it. place in Tuscany. They're drinking out of these little coffee cups. It's fantastic. Don't worry about it. Love all right. It. So most people, most people shouldn't be, but you know the problem with that is people love trading <clears throat> stocks for yeah. whatever reasons. Like it's fun. I, of course, I love fun, trading yeah. it too. I'm not being critical. I'm saying like maybe you own a Tesla and you love Tesla stock. You love Elon Musk. Maybe you have an iPhone you, and Warren Buffett owns Apple or your neighbor told you about some two, you know, two cent biotech that's got a cure. We love trading stocks. But my point is if you're going to, I brought a few slides on probabilities to help. Oh, that's great. Things that can help your probabilities of success. Jesse, thank you for the wine. Cheers. Thank Cheers. You. Love you guys. Cheers. What, are, what are we drinking? Amarone. Amarone de la Valpolicella. Okay. Cheers. It's a Corvina grape in Northern Italy. Gotta love Corvina grape. If you don't, what's, I, we can't be friends. What's special about the Corvina grape? Well, this wine actually, you know, what's amazing about this is it's very, it's very special actually because what they do is when we harvest our grapes in Napa, we put them in cold soak so the fermentation process doesn't start, so the yeast can't start the fermentation because it's too cold. So we just let the the juice sit there with the skins and get the tannins and just sit there for three days and then the fermentation process starts. These guys, what they'll do is that they'll get the grapes and they'll put them in a room and let's just let them dry out. And the, that's why there's a little bit less, these are slightly less dry than a Barolo or a Brunello. You're gonna pay the same, maybe even more, but it's gonna be less dry than some of those others. So mm. something like a Fra Diavola, like something a little spicy, I like to go with an Amarone, and it, it doesn't even need food, you could just drink it. Because it's less dry. That's slightly, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's delicious. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. This is great. Joe, finish your thought. Okay, so if people get one thing out of what I'm gonna say, keep it simple. 50-day moving average, which we talked about, roughly coincides, coincides with the 10-week moving average. I like to use the NASDAQ as the leading index, but you want to be in stocks when the wind's at your back and things are healthy. For the most part, when we're above the 50-day moving average, that means the institutions are supporting the markets and the wind's at your back. So This I'm, is on a daily or a weekly basis? 50-day moving average or the 10-week on a weekly chart. Okay. They roughly coincide to be uh, roughly the same. The point is, be in the markets when the wind's at your back and the institutions are supporting. I said, it's not an exact science. Think of it as a red light, green light. So I'll look at any chart you want me to look at, any stock, any index. If we're above the 50 day, I'll say, for the most part, institutions are supporting it. Green light, if it's below red light. Now, now here's a question that our audience is gonna have though. Sure. So what do you do on a crossover? So NASDAQ's above its 50 day, it's trending. Yeah. And then it like runs into a little bit of consolidation. No big deal. And then there's a, because the 50 days is noisy. Might, it might dip below or, so, yeah. Right. So in other words, your whole personality doesn't have to change from Warren Buffett to uh, Felix Zuloff <laughs> because it crosses below now, the 50 This is for day. people who like to trade. And I'm just trying to help with, if it's around the 50 day, if it's red light above, I mean, red light below, maybe yellow light, like proceed with caution. Right. Because people are always looking for like binary Buy or sell. There is no, but, there is no but buying. John, the, it the was problem, not that easy. The problem is, and it's not with these indicators, it's with us. Buy, uh, selling is so easy, right? Like it's it's easy to manage risk to the downside. I, no, getting no, back no, in, no, getting no, back no. in is selling very difficult. Is, people have a lot I of trouble selling. selling. Harder I'm buying. the opposite. I have no problem selling. People like, have sell trouble quick. selling gains because they worry about more gains. They're going to miss out but on. Get, and a lot of people have trouble taking losses. But you guys are flexible. Fami's right, and you're professionals. Once you might have a skill that most people don't have, but Fami's right. If you're able to make a decision and cut your, when you read Market Wizards, the top three rules in Market Wizards: cut your losses, cut your losses, cut your losses. I've never taken a big loss, but I've also had trouble riding big winners. But my point, my point, my big point was getting out is easy. Getting back in is very difficult. That's not for most people, dude. No, no, no. I think if you sell at like eight dollars because you're managing risk, nobody's buying back at Look, nine because you're anchored just, to where you sold. This is just it's probabilities because really the next in. slide shows you 2022. Maybe, maybe for rookies, maybe. Yeah, but for rookies. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. all rookies. The I next mean, slide, slide shows you. You have to know that the red line. This is 2022 daily daily chart of the S and P for 2022. The red lines of the the, oh, look at this. the red lines the 50 day and to your point, Mike, the rally that happened. The black lines at 200 day. Paul Tudor Jones said. Nothing good happens below the 200 day. If you plotted the New York Giants offense, it would all be below the 200 day this year. I'm just seeing if Mike's paying. I'm just trying to offend as many people as possible. But look, my point is, if you just use the red light, doesn't mean go cash. It doesn't mean sell everything. I'm talking about for traders. Just 
like the the we just talked about with um Druckenmiller. Instead of a thousand shares, maybe go right. fifty or a hundred yeah. so you don't lose as it's much. It's just awareness of the environment. Because we're this below. is a simple way to tell if the market's healthy or not. Yeah, act like you're below. If it's below, then act that way. This is shorten defensive. your size. Maybe don't take your your five favorite trades. Maybe take your t your top or two. Just reduce, this gets back. This is not something we talked about. We've talked about it before us. This is something that Jeff DeGraff taught me early on. Yeah, and it that and guy fucks. He, yeah, we love Jeff DeGraff. He's a fucking man. Yeah. And he, I mean, he's on my Mount Rushmore, best technicians for a, sure. Can we get him back on the show? Yeah, yeah. get him back on the show. We, had fun we, have, here, right? we have Neil Della coming out in a few weeks. You need more technicians on the show. Neil Diamond? Ne what? Your technicians show are the best shows. It's just what it is. Okay. Facts only. Okay. Jeff DeGraff, what he says, first, identify what type of market environment we're in. Then decide the which- The primary trend. It's not just a primary trend just of one asset. It's the environment but itself. Guys, there's but a guys, lot of people really regime. have trouble- Right? Can I, can I explain First, to you? I, hold on, let me finish. All right. First, identify the market environment. Then decide which tools and strategies are best for that environment. So if we're in a low volatility regime, then incorporating strategies that are good for high right. volatility regimes is stupid. I didn't even know he said and that. And vice that's versa. What I was doing, but go ahead. What you know was, what I'm what saying? Your point? What I want to say is this is what I think people really struggle with. There's something called the endowment effect, which is where when you own something, you tend to place a higher value on it than if you didn't own it. Meaning it's harder to part with something at a lower price because it's yours. And they, they've done this study where they took a class, they took an economics class, they broke the class in half, they gave half the glass a, a class a like coffee mug, and then the other half didn't get one. And then they instructed the half that didn't get the coffee mug to, to bid on those that did. And they found this effect that the people willing to bid were not willing to bid as highly as the sellers wanted them to bid because the sellers thought it was Absolutely. worth more. It's a coffee mug. It's nonsense. There's but, so much psychology. Okay. So in the endowment effect, how does that how does it manifest itself in practical reality with a trading account? What happens after you buy a stock? You love it. You love it. Of course you do. Because yeah. you love you, you're in love with your own decision. Okay. Yeah. So now you buy it at nine and you're obeying this 50-day moving average because you're disciplined. And you own it for three days. And it violates on the fourth day. But you just spent the last three days reading about it, listening to conference calls and bullying yourself up. It's really hard. Not for you. Michael has a different problem. A lot of people in our audience, I think it's like, oh, I can't sell it now. Like I know, like I know the discipline. There's a lot of factors. It's so hard. It's your to time do that. frame, your investment objects, because I might stop myself out. Warren Buffett might buy more. So mm -hmm. it depends on your time frame, depends if your value, depends if your growth, depends on how invested you are, depends on what you started your position size with. There's a million Wait, variables to the whole thing. But nobody is consistent enough to actually know what they are. So you'll see investors doing trades. You'll see traders turning you losses into long-term investments. You talk about this all the time, trader versus investor. Because people don't know what they are. You and Warren Buffett definitely trade different the, stocks. The, we both eat at Dairy Queen, though. No, <laughs> but, Jesse, have but, you said there's no <laughs> fundamentals in a bear market? But in the, a bear market, I never said that. No, the but point everybody is, wants to charge the a bear point market. Is there's always fundamentals. You talk about on TV all the time, decide, you know, trader versus investor. You're absolutely right. I encourage people to define themselves. Warren Buffett has a thing. He's a value investor. And he knows his strategy. I I'm more of a trader. Just figure out what you are. So they asked me a question today on Halftime Report. It's a good question. There's a guy from, like, one of the institutional shops. I think it's a technician. And he's talking about t uh, tactical overbought in large cap tech and do for a pullback and whatever. And I said, he's probably right. I don't know. But if you're an investor, who gives a shit? Right, time for What does it. that have to do with anything? So it's – but you have to know what you are. Because think about how many people don't know that advice like that has nothing to do with their if situation. If you as an average trader, what's your strategy? Most people can't define it. Work no. on a plan. Make money. Yeah. Work Make on a money. plan that fits all of your variables. Your age, is this retirement money? Are you saving for a wedding? You're buying a house? Are, you know, there's so many variables. Are, can you watch the market full time or not? Like work on a plan that fits your temperament, That's a good point. your investment strategy, and your personality. And if yeah. you don't have a plan, get one. If you don't have a personality, get a personality that's, as well. That's great. So, that's great advice from Joe Fine. That's good. So Wait, Joe's not done. One more. No, Go no, ahead. I got a couple more. So to JC's point, first identify when the market's uh, what market. And he's identifying it using a moving average. Just to I'm keep it simple. I'm identifying it a different way. Jeff DeGraff will identify it a different way. Actually, Jeff DeGraff uses a lot of moving averages. There's a. It's not about that. It's about identifying what the market is for you. And then adapting to it. Yeah. Right. He goes to Vegas or Hawaii or whatever you do when yeah. it's below a 50 day moving to, average. You don't go to Hawaii. I was just in Hawaii. He was just oh, in you Hawaii. Are? Oh, okay. Try to keep up, Josh. All Come right. on. All right.
So now let's assume step one, it's healthy and things are good. You're not healthy. I'm, I'm no, I'm not healthy. <laughs> let's assume the market's healthy. Can I'm we not be healthy. unhealthy tonight? We're going to be unhealthy tonight. Dude, okay. you should see what we're eating later. Oh, so yeah. it, oh, these oh. are the studies that William O'Neill did on the greatest winning stocks before they made their move. I put before in bold, underlined in capital to prove a point here. They took all of the before Walmart became Walmart, before McDonald's, before Microsoft, before these stocks went up tens of thousands, you know, 500 to 10,000%. And there were 18 of them, but these are the top four. So it, my point is, if you're going to be, you don't have to trade growth or value, whatever you want to do. If you want to trade stocks that have characteristics of the biggest winners throughout history. Wouldn't you want to be an investor and not trade these? You could, but you also have to deal with the ups and downs, like, you know, like the Amazons of the world. But there's I periods where the growth is, slows. So this is a great and, list of characteristics. We're going to run through them really quickly. To me, when I read this list, uh, other than number four, I say to myself, like, this sounds like an investing list. It can be. As much as it is a trading list. It, whatever works for you to right, so suit what, your style. What are these? So, so these are the this four is factors such of common huge sense. Yeah. It's such common sense, but people don't think I about it. I love how intuitive this is. The biggest winners throughout history. If you have a small business and you're growing your earnings and sales, doesn't your business have more value? Yeah, of course. Of course. So the, the main reason behind... The, the, the biggest winning stocks throughout history was growing your earnings and sales at 30% or greater comparing quarter to quarter, meaning comparing the fourth quarter of this year to the fourth quarter last year for retail reasons. You want to compare the holiday shopping season to the apples to apples to compare the holiday shopping season. So it's 30% comparing the fourth quarter of whatever year to the prior fourth quarter or first quarter, whatever. 80% of them came from five groups, consumer retail. Don't underestimate consumer- uh, Lulu. Clothing. Shoes, uh, restaurants Chipotle. as well. Chipotle. Dude, Mon Monster Energy. Like all of that stuff. Things that people don't even think of. Domino's. The biggest winners ever. Uh, even in the 60s, <laughs> like something like Leisure and Entertainment. <laughs> uh, Brunswick went up 1,200% in the 60s because it was a big bowling and pool boom. Lulu yeah. as with a big yoga boom. So don't underestimate fads, things like that. Most of them are computer-related, software, semi, stuff like that. Drug medical discoveries like Amgen in the 90s. So what's not here? The defensive stuff, JC does a lot of that work, like Staples, you know. Costco uh, looks good. But consum Walmart. consumer retail. Like, what are the defensive sectors? I don't know. Staples. Walmart's not, Walmart's not on this list, though. Walmart's a consumer defense. No, it's not. Consumer. Like, Verizon's it's not consumer. on this list. Well, these no are, first of all, these are the the, the major not, themes from not, the biggest winners. They're not, so the, not, S &P, they're not the S&P group. Themes. But utilities and um, Staples wouldn't be on here because they're defensive. Mm. So it's mostly growthier stuff. And then technicals. These are before they start their big move. They're usually above the 200-day or above the 50-day. So 99% of these stocks were above their 200-day. 96% were above their 50-day. Yeah. Average relative strength, 92. That's on a 1 to 99 proprietary rating that they use. So if you were to just start your process with, is the market, let's say the NASDAQ composite, above its 50-day? Yeah, yeah, check. Put a screen okay. with this characteristic. Now I'm going to run a screen. I only want to look at stocks that are reporting quarterly earnings per share as of last quarter, 30% higher than the previous year's yeah. you know, quarter. If you just started your list that way. Yeah, but versus, what if we're in an environment where you want the companies that aren't making any money at all? In fact, you want the companies that are losing the most money. 2021. Yeah. 20, you know, you know what I, you know what the sports also. analogy is? You own an NFL team or an NBA team, and you have the seventh pick in the draft. And, the, and they ask you, who are you going to pick in the draft? You know what you say? The best player available. So to your point, running that screen at least narrows down the universe of nine or 10,000 stocks, depending on what you want to – narrows it down. Let's say you narrow it down to 100. You're at least trying to pick from some of the best available that have characteristics of the best winners. Yes, there's going to be others, of course. There's some always a $2 say, biotech. By, defi by definition – you're going to miss those value rotations. Yeah, that's fine. Right. Correct. You're okay you're with that to be doing okay this. With There's you always to be okay a $2 that, biotech right? that goes to 100 but the point is you're, this is probably no, you're going to miss you're going to miss that quarter or two every year where like uh the defensives outperform the, yeah. the growth names. I mean, look, there's people, like I said, there's traders, investors, there's people who do value, do growth. This is for me more of as a growth trader, but to your point, you can stick with some of these as long as the growth is there and they keep growing. Yeah. I love this list. And by the way, this is also to me, the most important part of this list is the risk management aspect of it all. These are filters to help manage risk, right? That's you're part of the selection you're process. You're drafting from the NFL from the SEC versus drafting from the Ivy League. That's what. That's the analogy. Wow, hating on the Ivy. For sports? Ryan Fitzpatrick? <laughs> 
you're picking from a better pool of stocks than from like it of doesn't course. mean no, someone it doesn't compare, mean someone from the Ivies can't win the MVP. Yeah, own the best businesses. You it's ask people how like how do you how do you decide what stocks to buy? Whatever's on TV. The only way to make sure <laughs> that you own the best stocks is to buy the best stocks, right? Well, but this <laughs> helps you narrow down the list. Now, one last thing. There's more. If you order now, I'm going to throw in some steak knives. <laughs> so you now know the market's healthy. Fundamentals. There's a whole bunch of technical patterns. JC looks at different things, but cup with handle is, and double bottom are the two most common. I'm an island reversal guy. Right. I like it's my double shit. bottom. I love double bottom. So oh, yeah. cup I with, really do. Cup with <laughs> or higher lows. I'm a higher low guy. All right. So cup with handle is the most common is the next slide that a lot of people have heard from. So now you have a healthy market. You've narrowed it down to some strong stocks. This is where I believe, no matter what your time frame is, if you're a shorter term, medium term trader, longer term investor, I'm a big fan of getting a good entry point to help with risk management. So you just at least use a chart. You don't have to be an expert technician, but use a chart to help with your entry. So I know you joked on TV, you joked you buy something that drops 10% right away. That's what I expect. At least if you get it near a decent entry point, it might help you Yo, with that Yo, I got some technical patterns that you've you don't had have on here. That winners. you don't have on here. This, uh, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. You ever trade one of those? No, I've, I've <laughs> traded the Kardashian bottom. Stephen though. Clay? Kardashian bottom is one like of my favorites. Like Clay? No. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some of my indicators. So really quick with the cup with handle. This is what I was talking about earlier. You yeah, I, I like the setup too. It the makes cup, sense to me. So a lot of people have heard cup with handle, but they don't know what it looks like. It's literally tracing a coffee cup at the top. And on the bottom, you can use it on daily charts or weekly charts. This is an actual chart of Microsoft from 1991 coming out of the Gulf War bear market, 1991 bear market. So, you have to go back to 1990 to find one of these? Yeah, but it was flawless. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was perfect. It was, it was only one of them. It was pristine. <laughs> so, it only happened once. <laughs> it runs from, this is the only Historically one. Historically speaking. It's the only one. I had to go to 90. He's, still looking, he long. Next, he's still looking for the next one. It's this white yeah. whale. All right, we hope you find another one of these. I'll try to handles. find one. <laughs> Hold on. Can I, 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 can I show a cup in hand? Can I, can I? <laughs> Why are you hating on six? I Did appreciate the you use a photocopier to get that history. into the doc? <laughs> I, I. I appreciate the history. I'm done. It's a, it's it's an unsplitted uh, Microsoft chart from the 90s. Over. It's a classic. Oh, I love you, Jim. Don't let him talk to you like that. I can not explain the cup with handle, but go to this Joe. Go to Joe. 1991 might have been one of the best years for uh, music, maybe of all time. Rock music specifically. It's like yeah, a, I think that's it's accurate. a 44-day stretch in there. R.E.M.? Where like, no, seriously, like, I think like Use Your Illusion one and two come out. Rock yeah. and you had the whole, Mac, the uh, whole Seattle, Metallica the Black whole album. Seattle. Like all in all in oh. one shot. There's a Nirvana record in Nirvana. there. Let me tell you what my four year old. I swear to God, my four year old said this to me in the car the other day. Daddy, put on Nothing Else Matters. No, nice. I swear to God. Oh, you've uh, raised him well. Four. You've start. raised him well. He's off to a good start. What do you got? I wanted to show something, and I'm glad that Fami brought this up. It's oh, actually someone's from happy I brought some, I got something from 18... I got the Bethlehem Steel from 1914, <laughs> if you want me to... All right. I would love to see that, by the way. It's a great chart. Don't. We could do that on our own side. We'll do a little side. All right, go ahead, Jason. Can you throw up 54, John? All right, so he mentioned uh, these, and I, I wanted to make sure that we talked about risk management because that's really... A primary focus of mine. That's, no that's a more as recent well. cup with handle, FYI. <laughs> so it's, it is or it's not? It is. Thank it you, is, for, right? thank you for updating my slides. There yeah. we go. So this is technology. This includes that Microsoft. Technology. Go. Yeah. So. Is this a cup with handle? Yes. Yeah, this is a cup with handle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this is the, uh, what are we going to call it? The five before the nose dive, we'll call it. Right? How about that? So if you think the market's going to go down, here are five charts to prove that you're right. And if. If you think the market's going to go up, here are five charts that are going to prove that you're five correct. Five before the nosedive. It sounds like a band. Five before the nosedive? Yeah. Something like that. Wait, five what? Five, five, yeah. five charts. We lost okay. the plot. Five I know, charts. I know. Oh, I see. You're five. saying you could find five charts that will- I'm going to show you five charts that if you think the stock market's going to go down, they will confirm that you're correct. And if you think the stock market's going to go up, they will confirm that you are- Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go, no, he's got great charts. I'll just shut up. All right. Uh, <laughs> I got, I got. Uh, Technology ran back up to its former highs in late 21. Yes. It, last summer. Yes. We corrected for three months. It used to, as you discussed before, we bottomed in October, get yourself sober and market rallies. And that's what happened, right? Yeah. We're now making new all-time highs in technology. Mm. If the largest sector in the S&P 500 and 50% of the NASDAQ is making new all-time highs and is above the prior cycle's highs, it's really difficult to be pessimistic. It's really difficult so to be bearish. Can I say really what I was saying about the cup with handle really quick? 
The people who bought on the left at 175, it gets back to even. They say that prayer, get me back to even and I'm out. That creates the sellers, which creates the handle. That's when you want to buy, when the sellers dry up and the volume dries up, the sellers are done. Timing-wise, that can help. You usually see uh, less volume too, right? Like, yeah, like if you didn't make fun of my last slide and kept it up, I would have showed you that, okay. but it's okay. <laughs> right, I'm kidding, I'm fair, kidding. Fair, fair. Go, so go ahead. I'm kidding. Now, Fami will also agree, correct me if I'm wrong, if you fall back down in to the cup or handle, if, if you, you will. If you break below the handle. If you break below it, that is evidence that the sellers are not done selling. Right? Correct. You can make the same uh, argument about the homies. Am I allowed to say that, homies? Yeah, no, we're good with that. We're good with that, okay. So these are the late 21 highs. And again, same thing. We got back up to those former highs in the summer, corrected, are now breaking out. If you are bearish of the equities market and you think that recession and a crash and the yield curve and the M2 and all that stuff, if we're below those 21 highs and we break 85 in the case of the homies, then you're probably right. If we're above that, you're not right. And then the next one, Home builders, I don't need to explain why that's important, right? One of the most important parts of consumer discretionary. Super, super cyclical. Do I need yeah, to yeah. explain the importance of broker-dealers that are no. also breaking out to new all-time But to your highs? point, Josh, your oh, first question right. of what would turn you bearish, if a lot of these broke down yeah. below these levels, that then mm -hmm. I would— Wait, we just spent the last hour and 45 minutes answering that question? I this love is, it. This is my point. I love it. No, this I'm, is I'm my just, point. I'm just circling. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So— I'm Very slow to do. All of these countries around the world are making new highs. All of these things are—you know, we got the breath thrust, all this stuff— Great. Now, what is it going to take to get more defensive in the market from an intermediate term perspective? Just because these break, it could just be a speed bump or a false start. It doesn't mean 1987, right? Um, it just means that a more defensive, you know, sideways for long or something like that. You would watch that. Okay, broker dealers break back below the 21 highs. Same thing. Semiconductors. Do I need to explain to you why they're important? Yeah. Right? 160 is the level there. Those are the former highs. We're making new all-time highs. It's the same story. We rallied up in the summer. We corrected for three months and are now breaking out to new all-time highs. If we're above those levels, hard to be pessimistic. And last but not least, here's number five. John? I think, I think you did five. Yeah, that's oh, we already did five? That we was just, five. Time flies when we're time, having so much flies. fun, you know? Oh, no, industrials. Next one, the industrials. Yeah, I knew that. I'm not crazy, bro. You guys Canadian can oh, industrials. What Canadian. God's no, name no, is this? No, 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 no. I just wanted to throw in just a little how you doing there because they look the same. Uh, uh, it's really the U.S. industrials, but not yeah. probably not a coincidence that Canadian industrials are doing the same thing. I just wanted to, you know, we have a lot of Canadian friends. Shout out Canada. Yeah, you know? yeah. I don't. I just don't. Can't think of a Canadian industrial. It's probably a railroad. Yeah, C and I. Yeah. Okay. Canadian National, uh, C and Q. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and okay. they look good. I think the C, this, right, it's it's like um, logging would be Canadian industrials. Uh, logging is probably materials. Uh, I don't know anything. All yeah. right, dude, that was, that was magnificent. Yeah. Uh, can we do a couple of other things before we let you guys get out of here? Are you allowed to say magnificent anymore? Today, uh, Bitcoin has had an incredible run recently. And this is the stock I was most wrong about last year. Coinbase? I was, Coin, I Coinbase. Was, I was Holy shit. We I was wrong. bearish in the 30s. Where is it now? 160? You know how many people at like 80 said this is the greatest but short ever? Strasser was long. Did he ever sell? No, actually, that was Strasser's best trade this year. He, he crushed should, it. He, should call he was me. long a lot. Yo, he should call he was me long every... along the way. Strasser? And he like, do, would do kickers. Like he would be long to common. So long, Strasser like, was, month, like... was in here saying that he's bullish and Josh goes, I think whenever, it's going to whenever, whenever, Josh goes, I think it's going to By the way, zero. whenever someone tells me this is their greatest conviction short, there were five of them last year, everyone at least doubled. Yeah, buy them. Car I heard that a lot about Carvana. That was supposed to be a zero, one of thousand There were so percent. many people. It's got a 46% like, short Coinbase was one. <laughs> yeah. Coinbase now. was one universally. The hedge funds, I have so many hedge funds. And I'm not making fun. I mean, hey, I make mistakes all the time. I'm just saying. I'm not making fun. It's data. I just, they literally right, were so, like greatest short so ever. So the thesis on Coinbase is that it was heavily shorted. Okay, check. Also, as crypto mainstreams, it's going to be one of the biggest beneficiaries because it's a pure play on crypto. Micro, micro strategies is a bet on Bitcoin. Coinbase is a bet on crypto. Activity, crypto volume. Okay. Also, though, they're going to play some role in the ETFs, Big which role. we're probably going to get next week. They're going to be involved with the custody necessary for the ETFs, which— how many ETFs are there? It doesn't matter. There's, right now, there's, zero. There's, well, there's, no, I know. How many are they looking to approve? There's 10 or 12 Ten, applications, yeah, and they'll approve, let's say, half. Okay. Okay. And let's say one or two of them are going to get scale. Great. Coinbase is probably going to benefit just because of the halo effect. Um, that being said, this is Dan Dolev, who is a fintech analyst at Mizuho, friend of the show. Uh, Coinbase Global, uh, January 4th, yesterday, underperform. Price target 54. Wow, good for him. It's That's 152. Ballsy. He has this guy's balls. 
Bitcoin ETF hype boosted coin by 400% coin the stock, Coinbase stock, 400%, but may only add 5 to 10% to revenue. And just quickly, the potential upside to Coinbase revenue from Bitcoin ETF may be far less than what the stock indicates. The much anticipated potential ETF approval was a primary catalyst for the nearly 400% rally in coin shares in 2023. Wait, he might be right, but this doesn't matter because if Bitcoin goes to 100,000 or Here's 70, the then, then Coinbase is going to go up. This why is the double, guy, this why is the guy double down? With? This is the guy you're friends with? Yeah, on, on, your, on, what, on your paper he's short? A, he's a fundamental analyst covering uh, fintech. No, no, no. So this yeah, is yeah. his universe. Yeah, I'm not saying he's right. I have no idea. Guess what? If Bitcoin goes to $70,000 and he's right that the ETF adds 5 to 10% of revenue, it doesn't matter. Coinbase is going to go up another 50%. Why? Because it, it follows Bitcoin. The more activity in crypto, Here's, better for Coinbase. How about, what if, what if, what if there's a lot of money in Coinbase in there solely to bet on the Bitcoin ETF approval? That fully plans to sell no it way, and switch dude. to the ETF. If you're if you're switch. making if you're making that bet on switch to the ETF. Did you just no, no no I'm saying if you're making the bet, if you're front running the crypto e the Bitcoin ETF, you're not in Coinbase, you're in Bitcoin. No, because I don't, no, you don't know what we're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, why? Why? Because we institutions can't do that. And we're, and we're even retail investors are You guys are in RIA. If, if, can you just if, go to the blockchain chain? You can I, just go. The blockchain chain. <laughs> you can just go buy the BTC. The old blockchain chain. If I yeah, wanted to you can't do that. to the blockchain chain in my brokerage account, I'm buying Monster. Okay, but for your clients, I'm you can't do that. I'm sorry. I'm buying, buying MicroStrategy. Okay, but for your clients, you can't go to the blockchain chain and just buy it. MSTR, son. Do you know what this crazy motherfucker did at at uh, Stocktoberfest? You know I, that I remember. I was there. You know that Jenny from the block, the lady uh, Meltem. Yes, uh, who talks about crypto. Yes. She's like super famous. Tracy called it Jenny. And by the way, she was very right. Credit to her. Yeah, she. I, talk, no, she I spoke to her it. today. You're very right. She's great. No, I know. I know. It was. It was funny. Called her but Jenny from the blockchain. Yeah, yeah, that was a good line. In front of 400 people, you go, I don't know what Jenny from the blockchain is talking about. That's a good Should have listened to her. Listen to her. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's something I would say. Oh man. All right, we have to talk about this. By the way, love Meltem. By the way, shout out Meltem. She's yeah. great, super smart, cool as shit. By the way, that year, that was a long time ago. That was 2016. I was six, seven. When? No. Six, it 17. could be 15. I was going to give you Dude, guys that was Bitcoin 5,000. It was 17. 17. Maybe even earlier. I think it was 17. Uh, we're going to do favorites. First of all, this wine is incredible. This wine's very good. Let's give people the name one more time. What is it? Amarone de la Val Policella. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and English, English, please. English, please. <laughs> it's Italian. Ripple. What f***ing English? The it's red Italian. of the wine. Amarone de la Val Policella. I don't know. What's the English translation to that? Jay I don't know. you always bring the best wine. I don't just know wine, but this is... Jay-Z. Just call him Jay-Z. I don't think so. Michael, think so. Michael yeah. slurring you two sips of red wine. <laughs> Jay-Z. Uh, it's high alcohol. It is. Let's 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 do favorites. What do we what do we have? I'll start. Okay. Uh, I didn't finish this, but it's compelling. There's a documentary on Max HBO called Time Bomb. Mm. It's about the Y2K thing, and it really is a time capsule. They're talking about like the internet super highway or something. It's oh, it has like clips from 1999. So the Bezos internet. is in there, obviously. Bill Gates, Steve I Jobs. Love I love shit like that. So it's talking about how the world was going to crash and burn because of the Y2K bubble. Not the bubble, I'm sorry. Like the computer coding, we weren't going to be able to transition from 1999 to 2000. They closed the stock exchange. By the way, there early was for so that. much Fed. I remember the Speaking of M2, there was so much liquidity pumped into the system because they were worried yep. Y2K. So it was literally like the pandemic of the time. Not M2. just that. The CapEx, CapEx in 1998 and 1999 were off the charts because- corporations were updating all their computer equipment yeah. just in case. Like but the it, Fed literally provided so much liquidity because they're worried at the stroke of midnight, every computer was going to blow up. So they wanted to make sure it was literally the Nasdaq went from like 1100 to 52. There was a Nike a, commercial directed by Spike Jones with a, a jogger running through his neighborhood or her neighborhood and planes are falling out of the sky. And it was like Nike's new year's Eve commercial that came out at the end of 1999. And uh, it's on YouTube. You could watch it. But that's what they thought was going to happen. They thought yeah. because uh, the computers were built with two digits, not four, right. it wouldn't recognize that 00 comes after 99 and it's not turn of the century, 1900. Yeah. That, that's, they that thought was the everything concern. was going to blow up. Yeah. Uh, well, we avoided that one. All right. It's a good one. What is it called? Time bomb? Time bomb. Okay. It's good. Where is that? Uh, Max. Max. All right. JC, what do you got? I want to give a shout out to Arthur Avenue. Okay, go. How, how Say more. How often Dude, are you there? I was just there. I was there last summer. I love it. Psh, 
Otto Zero Novo is my spot. Really? I went to San Gennaro. I like I like Dominic's. I went to San Gennaro. I mean, it's one of those places, you know when you ask, ask Tom Lee, um, ask Sam Rowe, like two of my favorite Koreans, ask them like, what's the best Korean spot? They're like, just go to K-Town and just walk down the street. Hold on, hold on. Tom Lee's not Jewish? So, I mean, he's probably kind of, he's probably like me. Like, right. you know how I'm Cuban, but like I've, yeah, yeah. I've worked on Wall Street for 20 years, so yeah, I'm kind of Jewish, you know? Okay. He's probably like that. Um, so, you ask Italians, they say Arthur Avenue, they don't say uh, Mulberry Street. Let me, 100%. I agree. I agree with that. I'm Cuban. I'm not even Italian, but I'm telling like you. Disappeared. Like, Mulberry Street is tiny. Yeah. Listen, well priced. Mm. Um, the food is unbelievable, and it's the same idea as what Sam Rowe and Tom Lee will say. Just walk down the street in Little Korea, and the one with the shortest line, just go in there. You'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, on Arthur Avenue, is kind of like that. So what did you, what, you got, like, pizza, pasta, or you did something? Dude, like- I went veal parm. Yeah. Um, bone or not bone? Bone in. Mm. Oh, yeah, real thin oh. with the bone in kind of sticking off yes, the plate. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you right? see the mozzarella store, Ca- uh, Casa... Uh, I, I drove by it last week. There was a line 20, 20 <laughs> deep. It's unbelievable. Um, there's also a great sandwich place up, Italian sandwich place up there. I, I went after the. Called. I went to the Pinstripe Bowl in Yankee Stadium, and then mm. we went to Arthur Ave after. Okay. Uh, big shout out, man. So good, Arthur Avenue. Make it. You know, if you're in from out of town and you want good Italian food, you know, there's good the Italian around. Go up to the yeah. Bronx, man, and you can save a few bucks yeah. too. Joe, what do you got? Save a few bucks on what? It's not that expensive compared uh, to other Italian joints in the city. Oh yeah, fair. It's not. It's not carbone prices. Yeah, I agree. Joe, you got uh, favorites for us? Favorites? I wasn't. Can I just prepared. tell you, I, you're wearing the shit out of that blazer. Is that corduroy? Oh, thank you. Is, is that, that corduroy? Is that, oh, wait, is that thin corduroy? Well, sorry, it's laundry day it's for like you guys. You guys cor- it's like a breathable corduroy. <laughs> That's thin corduroy, you uh, son you of a know, bitch. Better to be overdressed. <laughs> is that a velvet? Dressed. This is yeah. Ralph Lauren, sir. Uh, this is kidding. cashmere. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, it's always <laughs> this laundry. Is <laughs> it's always laundry day <laughs> for Batnick. This is baby gap. He dresses gap. like it's laundry day every day. Um, uh, sh- go to Hawaii if you get a chance. Where I was were just you? there for a week. I went to Oahu, uh, Kauai, and Maui. Uh, I went with the old chef from SW. So, and we got to hang out with Chef Gordon. Watch Supermensch. Have you ever seen Supermensch? No. Chef Gordon's the um, amazing manager of like Alice Cooper. Uh, Luther Vandross, like so many musicians, and Emeril Lagasse created the super chef and um, celebrity chef stuff. But anyways, it's probably the happiest and most peace of mind I've been. So Fami's connected. How long is connected? Yeah. Fami's super connected. I was there for a week. Joe, somebody one time was like, how does Joe know all of these people? I was like, I don't know. They owe him money. <laughs> <laughs> they were all buying stocks below the 50-day. Didn't yeah. work out. Pay up. Hawaii is the best. Pay up. Hawaii... Dude. Chef Gordon says his blood pressure is 20 points lower on Maui than when he goes to California. There's I haven't something been to Hawaii since my honeymoon. It's I ma- should go back. It's same. It's go magic. back. If you get a chance, magic. take a break from the markets. If you get a chance, I know it's expensive and all this, but just if you get a chance, it's literally just the you can't put you, it, you how can't did you, you fly out of New York or or Logan. Vegas. Flew out. I was, oh, in, flew out I was of Vegas. in Vegas. Clock. Yeah. Five. And I flew out from there. Best place ever. What's the what's the flight length from Vegas? Five hours? Same as here to Vegas. It's five five hours. Oh, now. it's great. Yeah, so it's nice to five, five and a half, depending on the winds. But uh, Oahu, North Shore, some of the most craziest surfers, like 20 to 25-foot waves, amazing. You just sit there. You don't blink for three hours. And, and Joe, them. you just had your 50th birthday. I did. Happy birthday, oh Joe. God. Thank you. So I was I was with you, I think, on your birthday week. Yeah. I didn't get to the party, but we hung out. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and you told me the party was crazy. I got to play drums with Sebastian Bach I mean, <laughs> singing what? on stage. It doesn't suck, right? <laughs> it was fun. It All was right. fun. Th- yeah. thanks, Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, thanks to Joe Fami for being uh, our resident rock star. Love and you, what's, uh, Love you guys how do, more. How do people people want to connect with you, dude? People love your trader insight, your wisdom. Three, four, seven. Where do you want them, where do you want them to go? Uh, just go to my website, joefami.com. Joe Fami. Uh, Fami is spelled F A H M Y. F A H M Y. Okay. What could they do there? They could um, learn more about your process. They I don't, could sign I don't, up. I don't update the site. There's really not much. No, I'm kidding. You can, yeah. You, I have an educational product. I manage, manage money. You can contact me there. I'm happy to. Uh, All right. Awesome. Uh, Crushing on the show today. Thank you thank so you much. For coming. No, I, lo- I love you guys. And JC, allstarcharts.com as always. And uh, what 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 else should we tell people to do? You can follow me on you LinkedIn. Have, how many different how many different things do do you have that people can subscribe to? I know there are packages, but then there's like solo things. Listen, we have our our, our 
sort of flagship institutional product that, you know, was originally designed for, you know, hedge funds and things like that, which was great. And we opened it up to the retail community at an affordable price. And we just blew up from there. I mean, you remember. Yep. And, you know, it's really cool because we, we get to talk to the biggest portfolio managers in the world. And we get to talk to people that are learning how to trade options for the first time and everybody in between. So it really gives us great perspective. And, you know, you talk to people who talk to a lot of people and they'll tell you that the best ideas they get are by having the conversations that they're having. I think we're more fortunate because of the diversity of the type of people who we work with, financial advisors, portfolio managers at hedge funds. Um, you know, people managing their own accounts that have full-time jobs, you know, a lot of financial advisors for sure, right? Because, you know, we help with and our- it's not, all, it's not often you hear from people that are putting out research about how valuable it is to get feedback from that research. It's a jo- I, do it, I do it for free just yeah. for the information. Well, Kathy, Kathy talks about that, like why she puts stuff out on Twitter. She wants the pushback. She wants people yeah. to say, here's why you're wrong. Mm-hmm. It forces her to, to look again. Mm-hmm. So you you get that same kind of push and pull. Also, I've gotten good over the years at being able to look around the corner and being able to sort of gauge sentiment by the feedback that we're getting, by the mm. types of communications that we're receiving. There's a, just a ton of value there, which leads me to believe that no matter how rich I get, I, I can't imagine a situation where I'm not sharing my ideas because the information oh, that we that. get from that feedback. See, I'm, you and I are the opposite. I get no feedback whatsoever. My Partners keep me in the dark whenever possible. I have no publicly facing uh, email address. Chris reads my emails. I think he sends me one out of 100. I don't read comments. I have comments disabled on Twitter, and I don't tweet anymore. I'm like the exact John, opposite John, cut a f***ing mic. It's no, I like it. I, I ca- Listen, bull, different strokes bull, for different folks. Bull market, bear market. <laughs> I, have no, I have no feedback whatsoever. It's a great feeling. All right. You're also, hold on. You're also the CEO of an investment advisory. Allegedly. Allegedly, fine, right? Nobody knows what you actually do, right? It's not been proven. Right? I, I mean, you, oh, these guys are working, right? You're just sitting here drinking, talking shit, yeah, running your mouth, right? <laughs> so, I live, for, in a for, fe- I live in a feedback-free zone. Fine, but, you do, but you, you do something very different than me and Fami. That's right. That's Favi. right. You and Fav. Hey, uh, guys, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for I want to give special thanks to John, who handled the show all by himself today. Wow. So Duncan is coming out of surgery. I hear that. <laughs> everything. No, he's not. Yes, he is. And everything went really, really well. He now only has uh, two legs. So they took his third leg, finally. It was very strange. And we're, we're so glad he's in recovery. Shout out to Sean, How Rob. How this wine? What is Nicole, he talking about? Nicole, I love you wearing that pink hat. Perfect. All right. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for listening. Please leave us a rating and review. Visit joefami.com. Visit allstarcharts.com. We love you. We'll see you soon.